It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. What a great panel. Ian Thompson, Georgia Dow, Oh Doctor, lots to talk about. They're taking Jeff Bezos' wings away for a pretty good reason, I guess. Uh, the right to repair, the FTC says you've got it, but would you buy a repairable laptop? And then we're going to talk about the NSO group hacking and what companies need to do to keep us safe. It's all coming up next on Twit. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twit. This Week in Tech, episode 833, recorded Sunday, July 25th, 2021. Herbs of Providence. This episode of This Week in Tech is brought to you by Wealthfront. To get your first $5,000 managed free for life, go to Wealthfront.com slash twit and start growing your savings today. And by Amazon Pharmacy. Amazon Prime members can save on prescription medication when not using insurance, with medication as low as a dollar a month, plus free two-day delivery. Learn more at Amazon.com slash twitrx. And by Worldwide Technology and HPE. WWT has an innovative culture, thousands of IT engineers, application developers, unmatched labs, and integration centers for testing and deploying technology at scale. WWT helps customers bridge the gap between strategy and execution. To learn more about WWT, visit www.wwt.com slash twit. And by ESET. ESET boasts ransomware protection that means business with internet security products and services backed by world-class research and tech support. Learn how to protect your business from ransomware at business.eset.com slash twit. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show where we cover the latest tech news. And we have brought together, I think this is the... Uh, I think this is the all-star cast. I think this is the Friends cast of Twit. Like, when you... This is the Friends reunion of Twit. We got you Owen J.J. Stone, O Doctor of IQMZ fame. Good to see I'm, you. I'm just here so I don't get fined. That's all. So you don't get fined? Uh, fine. I'm contractually obligated oh, yeah, to be right. here You're not going to say anything? So You're just going to sit just there? Just got to make sure Who so was I don't it get said fined. that at here. the uh, Super Bowl press conferences? It was Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn, the great Marshawn Lynch. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Beast mode on Dr. Jones. There he is. There he is. Beast mode. Uh, also with us, speaking of beast mode, Georgia Dow. She is the, the therapist on the show. She's going to help us. She's going to make us feel better. She's on the YouTube. You did that Apple talk show now with uh, Renee. Uh, is that YouTube.com slash Georgia Dow? That one, that you can find it on my channel, but I also do like therapist reacts videos. Oh, and, nice. Uh, psychology videos. So, oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Therapist reacts. Yeah. They're super fun. So, oh, cool. I got something for you to react to. But first, let me introduce the third member of the panel, all the way from Blighty, that Emerald Isle, the city of the big shoulders. No, I'm confusing. Ian Thompson <laughs> from the register.com. Hello, Ian. And good afternoon to you. Mustache list. list. Ba baby yes. face, Ian. Find the baby face. Soup strainer. Gosh, you know, because I, I've been playing I, this new uh, Amazon uh, game called New World, and I thought, well, it's called New World. I should really have a, a character that looks like somebody from the New World in it. So I modeled my character after you, Ian. Uh, That's I don't, disturbing. <laughs> 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 That's yes, I look exactly that muscly. Not a not a hint of a pot belly there at all. <laughs> it's a young Ian. It's a young Ian. Do you can you do your hair like that though? Because I really like the little uh, little things. I think the if little I quiff, if right? I, yeah, if I could rotate it, I'm, he does have a little braid uh, behind. Honestly, I'm getting to the point now where I'm keeping it long to avoid flesh colored highlights. So good thinking. Just... Good thinking. The comb over always an option. Actually, that Amazon game which is in beta right now, comes out in August, got a little bit of a furor going this week because apparently was it was so high quality, it was frying people's video cards. 
uh, the, if you have, it's recommended, I think, if you have uh, an NVIDIA GTX 3090, that you not play the game. <laughs> uh, hundreds of people reporting on, um, on Reddit that they're, that they're getting bricked. Be and I guess, I gather, the feeling is it's just overheating the cars because it's so damn good looking. I wonder how much Amazon paid for that. Is is it is it that I mean I haven't played it but is it that good looking to you like does it look that great to you No, okay, does because I, <laughs> I I I almost feel like this is some kind of market. What is that? I mean I played a lot of games and I pushed a lot of graphics and stuff on my computer. For you to be frying out video cards, uh, there must be some kind of virus in this game. <laughs> I don't know how that's happening. Amazon. I think it's just hype. Outlandish. It might just yeah. be hype. Amazon put they out a statement wanna... saying. Thou hundreds of thousands of people have played this game in, in closed beta. Millions of hours played. We've received a few reports of players using high-performance graphics cards experiencing hardware failure. Um, we see no indication of widespread issues. Well, it's only 1,000 instead of 100,000. I don't know. The new world closed beta is safe to play. Darn it. In order to further reassure players, we will implement a patch today that caps frames per second on our menu screen. So you can't turn it up too high. I think well, that usually they do have a quality thing that you can regulate, like how you can how you want to play a game. If you want to play it full or 1080 or something like that. The fact that they don't have that's kind of weird. If I you guess. if you have a look, if you have if you if you manage to score a 3090, hard to get card because of all the Bitcoin miners and and others, uh, you're gonna turn it all the way up, Owen. You're going to yeah. say, I well, want the best. I paid and, for it. And you shouldn't have a problem with that car, which is why it's so outlandish to me. Yeah. I, I just can't even imagine that happening for, but again, you know, I'm going to uh, guess Samsung phones blowing up on in your pocket all day long. Yeah. Like, everybody's phone was just exploding for some reason. I'm going to guess it was a, it's, it seems to be with the, the EVA manufactured cards. And then maybe they had a batch that didn't have, maybe the heat sinks weren't attached properly or they didn't put enough or put too much thermal paste on them, that there was some that's, manufacturing defect. That uh, sounds better. And the cards got overheated and it's a popular game and so forth. So, uh, or it looks to be, I mean, it's not out yet, but uh, it looks to be a popular game. And as I said, I look exactly <laughs> inadvertently like the old Ian Thompson in the game. <laughs> so that's why I named well, him Ian Thompson. The old Ian Thompson. Let's yes. see, nineties clubbing T-shirt, fluorescent jacket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it seems about right. Jeff Bezos, the uh, former CEO of Amazon, launched himself into near space or space or maybe space, sort of space, depending on your point of view. Uh, this week in a strangely phallic uh, rocket ship. Um. Wearing a cowboy hat. Actually, I think he took the cow. He didn't wear a space suit, though. He just wore, like, a blue coverall. And, and well, then, this is it. I mean, now to become an astronaut, you need to be able to get into a blue coverall and strap yourself into a, <laughs> a chair, apparently. <laughs> Although, uh, thankfully, the U.S. has said you are not an astronaut unless you actually do something useful. That's so the funniest thing people, ever because... It's great. There was, you know, Bezos, we talked about last week, or maybe the week before. I Was I here last week? I don't think I was. Uh, was I here? I can't remember. I wasn't. No, it was Jason Snell. Two weeks ago, we talked about it because um, Blue Origin had subtweeted Richard Branson saying, well, he's not really going into space. And, you know, and we got bigger windows. And, uh, and, and ironically, it uh, turns out the FAA changed its definition of astronaut the day Bezos went into space. So he's going to get honorary astronaut wings. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. You get any wings. You got to go into space. Well, was pay it your space? taxes. He, yeah, pay your taxes. He had the bad yeah. taste. I Upper think. atmosphere. What do you think? Was this bad taste or not? At the end, in the press conference, he wants to, he thanked Amazon customers and employees for making this possible. <laughs> so let, let, let me let me answer that question first. Let, let, let me answer that question real quick. Okay. Is that it's tasteless? Not be real quick. Is that tasteless? <laughs> first and foremost, you have a government contract to pay for most of your ship. Secondly, you don't let your employees go to the bathroom. Thirdly, half my stuff gets canceled and it doesn't come in two days, which I'm paying prime for anymore anyway. Now I get stuff in a week, three weeks, four days, and you still charge me the same amount. And thirdly, besides the fact you don't let people unionize, have a regular living wage, you are one of the most worst people on the planet. You wore a cowboy hat. You're basically a space <laughs> monkey. You're in the upper atmosphere. You're not 
not an astronaut. You're not a pilot. You are a loser that got shot in the space. And then you come back down here and say, I'm going to give $100 million to Van Jones to do whatever he wants. How about you give all your employees a bonus? How about you let them go to the bathroom with, with a 15 minute break that actually means when you go there, you get 15 minutes to go to the bathroom and come back. How about you not fire people for sitting there being tired, sitting on their feet for 12 hours straight and have such a turnover hey, rate so high hey, because you don't care about people. He thanked do that them. Do going into space. He thanked them. At least he thanked them. He acknowledged that they worked hard for him. He, yeah, but the real thank you is money, right? Like yeah, well, that's paying true. them a living wage would be a yeah. real thank you. I don't yeah. know why did he give Van Jones a hundred million dollars. What's up with that? That's charity. He's doing fine for himself. He gave Van Jones and uh, Jose Andres because, uh, a uh, hundred million a black each. Guy, let me give a black guy a hundred million dollars and make it okay. Like the, he gave ten billion dollars to the rainforest. We don't even know what he's doing to the rainforest. You. You're burning. You well, want to take rich people. Yeah, <laughs> you want to take rich people <laughs> up into the upper atmosphere, destroying more of the planet. Does that thing have a catalytic converter? No, I don't actually, know. I, wait. I was trying to wait because that's one of the uh, things the me. subtweet said. The tell Blue me. Origin spacecraft is environmentally better than the Branson because it doesn't it doesn't uh. pollute. It's uh it's burning hydrogen. Or something. I don't the know. entire thing of making, like, let's not pretend that going into space is a net zero <laughs> well, <all> right, <laughs> that's from true. the environment. Yeah. Like, they had to make it and all the technology. Well, and that's why he doesn't get space. official <laughs> wings, astronaut wings, because you can't just be a payload. You have to actually do something to improve public safety, do some science, fly the fly the thing. Uh, you have to do Maybe something. Maybe go through astronaut training. Yeah, I, chimpanzees did more for space than these rich billionaires have done. I mean, this is it. I mean, to become an astronaut, you've got to master two or three very highly skilled jobs, pilot, engineer, medic, scientist, the rest of it. You've probably got to learn two or three languages as well. Someone just paying quarter of a million just to pop up into near space and then drop down. That's not an astronaut any more than if I buy time on a track, I call myself a racing driver. Well, actually, that's the more legitimate concern is that both of these guys, I think the point of this is really uh, to create a commercial uh, business, sending people up after, you know, in the same way they did. Uh, well, and yes, I think uh, $250,000 is the going price, at least on the Branson. And it says a lot who, about the way that wealth has accumulated in society that yeah. people can just throw away a quarter it's, of a million. It's as close to burning money as you can rights. get. Right? This well, is a very it's literally burning money. It's, it's literally almost literally. Money. Well, you're burning hydrogen, but uh, almost very close. Yeah. And and you, Uncle Leo, as a world traveler, um, you know, you've worked really hard and you are getting old, so you're traveling more. But I remember like five or six years ago, it was a great article that just blew up like wildfire. The new wealth showing is traveling and uh, experiences, experiences yeah. and going to get a, a restaurant Not things, in Salt Bay but and seeing Mount yeah. Pichu with a flower that was 18,000 years old by this village people. Like, so now they're like, shoot, we done went everywhere on the planet. I got a mega yacht. Oh, let's shoot people into the upper atmosphere and charge them a quarter billion dollars to go float around, which technically you can get on a plane. They, they do that stuff where you float around a plane for a little bit. Go do that. Stop trying to get in space because you're not an astronaut. Are you mad that he is building a half billion dollar boat as well? A yacht? I hadn't heard I about mean, the boat. What's this? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I he's got know. the money. It's a 417 foot super yacht worth an estimated half billion. It's so big it has its own support yacht. Half a billion oh, dollars? Sake. <laughs> it's just it just seems like like we have people that are starving to death. It just seems so tone deaf. I like we really have to start to rethink the way that we think about our society, that it really, like, yes, we're hardwired to just want more because it used to be that there wasn't enough and we weren't going to be able to gather everything. But now it just seems like some people want to take everything. And I'm happy that people are angry about billionaires existing. I'm done with it. Like, if you're not going to be actually trying to make the world a better place, what kind of mark are you really leaving on it? Like, it shouldn't be a Should mark. we not allow billionaires? We should tax them. Yeah. <laughs> Like you should at least yeah. be paying the taxes. We should get rid of the loopholes and then see what the hell happens when they're actually paying for what they I mean, should be their fair share. Let's be honest, they're not contributing. Tax in place. It's, it's they're not, not contributing to society. It's not like there's no incentive to succeed if you could just be a hundred millionaire. There's still that's you know, that's a good goal. But it's more money you, than you no. need. What do you need a thousand million dollars for? 
you deserve to make as much money as you make, as long as you're paying your employees a livable wage, as long as you're paying taxes to actually get back to society. Again, you give fake $10 billion to the Amazon. Zuckerberg gave $100 million to Newark, New Jersey, basically just a little campaign fund for Cory Booker, which did absolutely nothing for Newark. Some of the kids got some new books. It was in stock. So the value went down after the promotion. So these are all the scams that they do. I don't, don't give anyone anything, pay your taxes. Then we can put pressure on the government to actually pay for the things that society needs. Instead of saying, Oh, we can't afford social services. We can't afford helping people out with more housing because people are skirting the money and you're doing what with it? You're shooting yourself into the atmosphere and you're about a half a million dollars boat, which I say, uh, Bezos, you could do better because I just Googled it. There's a lot of boats bigger and better than your half a billion dollar boat. You should be doing something nice good, with There was money. a good piece by um, Abigail Disney, who is very, very wealthy. Uh, the the daughter of Roy Disney, Walt Disney's brother, they, they both... She's a very interesting character, yes. She is because she says, I was taught from a young age to protect my dynastic wealth. And, uh, and what she says in it is that the very wealthy, and maybe it is even almost the, the the religion of the United States, have this notion that it's better to keep our money than give it to the government. We'll do better with our money than the government would do with it. And that's kind yeah. of the justification for compl completely legally paying as little tax as possible. Because we want to keep as, protect your dynastic wealth. She says, uh, the, the lawyers call it the corpus. You always want to protect the corpus... Uh, because, again, you think you, it's better in your hands than it would be in the government. And I bet you there's a lot of people listening who think that's a good thing. But I have to say, no matter how much philanthropy very rich people do, it is dwarfed by the amount of money government spends to feed kids, to house the homeless, to do all the things uh, government does. It spends a lot more money on those good works than uh, any philanthropist or all well, philanthropists I mean, I have, to, I have to say, as the token Brit here, aristocracy really doesn't work. America should know this. You know, there's a reason why America won. Um, you know, it, just having dynastic wealth, it's not good for competition. It's not good for innovation. It's, you know, you need a, a fairer spread and raise everyone up. She, this is actually a, kind of a great confession. She says, there's another reason for my inaction. I'm deeply ashamed to say what it was, but here goes. Having money, a lot of money, is very, very nice. It's damn hard to resist the seductions of what money buys you. Uh, she says, once you fly, once you fly in a private, once you fly first class, you never want to fly economy again. Once you fly in a private jet, you never want to fly commercial again. She says the dynamics of wealth are similar to the dynamics of addiction. The more you have, the more you need. I can understand it. I flew first class and going back to hardtack and swill class afterwards was, <laughs> was tricky. They don't even <laughs> give you hardtack and swill anymore, <laughs> thanks to COVID. Well, I mean, the, yeah. the American <laughs> Airlines, no, but at least the UK has some standards. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, I got upgraded to first on a flight back from New York and you get the mattress on the full lie-down bed and a pair of pyjamas and a fried breakfast when you wake up and 18-year-old single malt scotch to go to bed with. I can understand it. And I know somebody's flown on the, one of the Google corporate jets, and it's fantastic. You fly into Paris. Yeah. You don't have to go through the terminal. No. The, the customs officer comes to right you. Off. You get into yep. a car and you go away. Yep. I'm sure it's tremendously seductive, but it means that, you know, in Bezos' case, people are having to pee in bottles just to keep their jobs. Here's her, uh, it isn't here's her final paragraph. If your comfort requires the society be structured so that a decent percentage of your fellow citizens live in a constant state of terror about whether they'll get health care in an emergency or whether they can keep a roof over their family's heads or whether they will simply have enough to eat. Perhaps the problem does not rest with those people, but with you and what mm -hmm. you think of as necessary, proper, yeah. and accessible. I, I think it's a cultural problem, right? Acceptable. Like, I think that our culture needs to change what we idolize, what we put into the media. It shouldn't be Jeff Bezos, like, flying in a rocket, doing absolutely nothing but wasting money, but the people that are actually trying to change the world. If we, you know, when, like, he should be ashamed. Like, really, that should be a shameful thing that he spent that much money to do that little 
for that much press versus people that are actually trying to save people's lives and feed the hungry. They're not the ones that we idolize. They're not the ones that children do their, um, you know, their presentation on who's the person that you look up to. And I think that our culture has done that through the media, through the shows that we watch, through everyone trying to gather as much crap as they can. And that that means that you've won in this, like you don't get to take it with you, but you could make a mark on the world to actually make a better place for it. And I think that we need to fully relook at what we teach our children as what is important. Agreed. Yeah, I think capitalism is the religion of uh, not only this country, but in, the, in a way the Western world. And it's, you know, you see it even in China. I love capitalism. Pay your taxes. I don't care it's, it's, what it's, you it's, said. It's, it's greed. Pay, I, no, I, it's, not, it's not capitalism I'm, that's the problem. It's, it's what it stands for. If you were using your money to be able to make this world a better place and you actually were conscious of your effect upon it and didn't act like you're greater than thou because of it, it might be a different situation. But is this related to the conversation which has also been going on and is about to come to a head because the White House has now appointed a, a significant number of antitrust regulators who are against big tech? Is this related to the, the issues we have with big tech and the calls to break up big tech? Is it, is it similar or is it a different issue entirely? I've got to say, I, I, as, a, as the foreigner over here... It is astonishing to me that America has basically legalized bribery and called it lobbying. So what we're going to see over the next couple of years is, yes, there are a bunch of antitrust people being appointed by the government. And big tech is massively ramping up its lobbying spending as well. So we're going to see a lot of money going into politicians' pockets. And I suspect not much action, but we shall see. Amazing article in Motherboard. Uh, on a report that finds big telecom spends $320,000 lobbying Congress every day. The last Congress, telecom companies, AT&T, uh, Verizon, Comcast, spent $234 million lobbying the 116th Congress. That's almost $320,000 a day. Comcast, the biggest spender, $43 million. AT&T, $36 million. Uh, Common Cause and Communication Workers of America issued a joint study. They said the powerful ISP lobby will seemingly spend whatever it takes to keep politicians beholden to them and maintain a status quo that leaves too many Americans on the wrong side of the digital divide. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, the situation is ridiculous with broadband in this country. You've got a couple, two or three companies running very highly defined networks and screwing people, pardon my French. But, I mean... The, the they get government-mandated and monopolies. the speeds you get are insane. Yeah. And they're all monopolies. There's no competition at all. And any time any competition rears its ugly head, they go back to Congress and said, could you squash that? They, uh, the top targets last Congress saved the Internet Act, which would have restored net neutrality. Uh, the FCC Consumer Protection Authority stripped away during the Trump administration. Telecom lobbies fought against the Accessible Affordable Internet for All Act. They derailed the Resilient Networks Act, which was uh, an attempt to shore up Puerto Rico's um, network after the outages from Irma and Maria. Uh, 83 million Mar Americans live under a broadband monopoly. One company provides broadband in your region. Millions more live under a duopoly. And the result is obvious. Spotty access rates, Karabodi, slow speeds, high prices, and generally terrible customer service. I mean, there, was a, there was an article, I'm damned if I can remember where it was, but they looked at one city where there was competition on one street and no competition on the next street. Yeah. And with no competition, they were paying 40% more. It's amazing. It's just, it's daylight robbery. Yeah. Okay. You well, need competition uh, in this sector. And unfortunately, across all sectors, the biggest thing is you fix it by giving politicians a certain amount of funding. You don't raise money. You don't take lobbying money. But that's never going to happen because the people who write the rules <laughs> are the ones getting themselves. the money. So, I mean, and across every industry, tech, everything. And, and it's like, now I don't know who's going to stop a, nop a monopoly. Like before everyone was against Microsoft because Microsoft literally was running the world. So that was kind of a thing where they were like, we got to do something here. But now when you have something like Facebook, they're just going out at, oh this is good. All right. If I can't buy you, I'm just going to simulate everything you do and throw it into the, the projects that we own 
and destroy you. Either one yeah. or the other is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just the way that it is so, right now. But, um, and somebody in the chat room is saying this, and I, I also agree. It's not like we stopped using Facebook or stopped shopping at Amazon. We also love the benefits we get from Amazon. I mean, it, it's not just uh, Congress unwilling to change things. Uh, I shop Amazon. I mean, I, I could act with my dollars. <clears throat> Why don't we No, do I mean, I shop at Amazon as well, and it's a guilty purchase, but I just can't get British crisps anywhere else. Um, but the uh, yes, we bear a certain measure of responsibility, but capitalism works when it's regulated. When it's unregulated, capitalism naturally moves towards monopoly or an oligopoly. So regulate it, make people pay their taxes, make people pay their proper way, and yeah, let's take the benefits and the and you know the the innovation that it spurs. All right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring your uh, blood pressure up through the roof. I apologize. We can all take a deep, <laughs> deep breath. This is this was supposed to be. I figured I got Owen, I got Georgia, I got Ian. This should this show is going to be a laugh riot. <laughs> so far, we've done climate change and international oh, climate, capitalistic god. demise. Oh my well, god! Well, you know, now let's talk about COVID. <laughs> now, now, well, now, now we're going to talk about uh, helping build up our individual wealth. That's I agree with right you. Now. You know that, don't you, Owen J. J. Stone? Oh, doctor, always good about uh, about making sure I do my job. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. This is a this is a, a really this is a sponsor we've had for a very very long time. I've really been a fan of theirs. Uh, you know, we you hear all the news about, you know, diamond hands and stonks and holding your uh, AMC or, hold, you know, buying GameStop. And I have to say, I know that's fun. It's exciting. But the day traders I know, a lot of them will say, I made a lot of money. And then they shut up because then the next day <laughs> they lost a lot of money. And the yep. net is, it ain't all going that well. But it is kind of incumbent on any of us to take care of ourselves in our old age, to save up. Maybe you want to buy a house, get married, uh, send your kids to college. And I would strongly suggest you not get seduced by the, the dreams of great riches with your diamond hands, but instead growing your long-term wealth with a Wealthfront investment account. Decades of data show investors that trade individual stocks any individual stock, not just any individual stock, underperform the market every year. In fact, only the real fact is 1% of day traders beat the market. I know, and everybody says, well, I'm going to be in that 1%. You're not. The odds are not in your favor, especially if you're doing it alone. Team up with Wealthfront. Wealthfront makes it easy. You don't have to spend every waking hour checking the indexes. You Investing with Wealthfront is easy easy. Whether you're a beginner or if you invested for years, Wealthfront makes it easy. They have the right tools for every need, every portfolio. Wealthfront can create a portfolio of globally diversified, low-cost index funds personalized for you in minutes. You don't have to worry about manual trades. You don't pick stocks. You don't watch the market. They handle all the investing. They can even do stuff that is hard to do on your own, like something called tax loss harvesting. This will help you pay, lower the taxes you pay as you invest, and it will probably cover your low annual 0.25% advisory fee. That's all Wealthfront costs, 0.25%. That's why Wealthfront now has $20 billion of assets. People really trust Wealthfront. You can get your first $5,000 managed free by going to Wealthfront.com slash twit. It only takes $500 to start. Grow your wealth the easy way. Let Wealthfront do the work for you. To get your first $5,000 managed for free forever, go to Wealthfront.com slash twit. That's Wealthfront, W-E-A-L-T-H-F-R-O-N-T, Wealthfront.com slash twit. Start growing your savings. It's a, this is, you know... I. People tell me all the time, I got it, I got it all figured out. Look at this graph, look at this chart. I got it all, I, writ tw I wrote, pro I got 30 monitors, 20 programs. I got to just do, do the right thing. Wealthfront.com slash twit. Your, your heart will thank you. And in about 40 years, your older self will thank you too. Wealthfront.com slash twit. We thank you so much for your support. Um, be, be the tortoise. 
Be the tortoise. That's right. Be the tortoise. The Who tortoise wins. The, the, hair, the hair looks good, but the tortoise wins. Be the tortoise. Play it slow. I was so disappointed. I read this article in The Wired. The FTC votes unanimously to enforce right to repair. And I thought I started celebrating. Woohoo. Yaha. Um, the move follows an executive order issued last week by the White House urging the agency to secure consumers' rights to fix their own gadgets. But then as I continue to read, I found out the FTC really doesn't have a lot to do with any of this. It's nice. It's good. Um, it's great that the government is behind this, even though Apple, John Deere, and others have been fighting it state by state. The FTC issued a lengthy report last May that blasted manufacturers for restricting repairs. They voted five to nothing um, to enforce the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. Uh, of course, the new chair at the FCC is one of those people President Biden appointed that is really uh, anxious mm -hmm. to prosecute big tech. Um, but they did point out in the statement that the, they've only taken one action on this in the last decade, and that was someone who was auto-enrolling people for extended warranties. <laughs> There's a big hill to climb between that and Apple, you know, suing third-party repair shops and the, and, and the rest of it. You know, the, the repair absolutely needs to be done, but the FTC statement was a bit weak source, I thought. Yeah, this is what... This is what happens when you have lobbyists that lobby for your right, because Apple puts on this huge front about we care about the economy. That's why we're not giving you headphones anymore. The package is slimmer. We're wasting less so cardboard. Ridiculous. But you won't allow people, one, to make a living in a business, two, to recycle your phones and keep them alive longer, still keeping the ecosystem. It's not like they take iPhones and turn them into Androids. They're mm -hmm. prolonging your product. But Apple's real device thing is, Drop it on the ground, break it with my Gorilla Glass, go buy a new one tomorrow. And only we can refurbish it. And we really don't even sell the refurbished to people. We pack them up and send them overseas when we get bundles of them. So it's such a scam because they that company specifically acts like they care about reusing and renewal and the account and the environment and all that stuff, but they don't. They just don't. And and companies well, no, I mean, Apple Apple invented entire new screw heads just to yeah, Steve Just Jobs didn't want anybody, anybody to get stuff. into the original Mac, so he created the Torx screw, uh, thinking nobody would be able to get into it. Of course, he underestimated the uh, the hacker Ingenuity mentality. Is, yeah. yeah, and you can get a. It's easy to get a Torx screwdriver these days, or a pendulum, or whatever they're using. Uh, Kyle Weens testifying in front of the Productivity Commission uh, this week uh, brought up some really strong examples. He says. Uh, we've seen manufacturers restrict. Kyle Weens is the CEO of iFixit, I should mention, one-time sponsor, actually off-time sponsor on our shows. But I love iFixit. I've actually purchased their Fixit kits. I bought a, mm -hmm. a battery kit for my iPhone, uh, my um, Pixel X 4XL, which was battery had swollen. 39 bucks had a replacement battery, all the tools, took it apart, put in a new battery. It worked. I'm like, wow, I'm pretty handy. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but well, no, I mean, you gave me an iFixit toolkit for Christmas. Yes, a couple of years ago, we gave all the hosts that. Yeah, exactly. That saved my bacon a couple of months ago. He says I, my ThinkPad he, was showing up a, a non-detected battery, and it was like, do I send my main computer into IBM for two weeks, or do I take the back off it, reset the battery, and see how that works? So, of course, we need to repair this stuff. Yeah. And, what? you know, I think Kyle's even fairly conservative. He's not He's not even saying, because his company sells, basically sells parts, manuals, and tools. That's their, their business so that you can fix your own stuff. He says, look, if something's gone out of warranty, we should be at least be able to buy the parts to fix that, right? Mm -hmm. He says, we've seen manufacturers, this is a quote, we restrict our ability to buy parts. There's a German manufacturer of batteries called Varda. They sell batteries to a wide variety of companies. Samsung happens to use these batteries in their Galaxy earbuds. But when we go to Varda and say, we want to buy that battery as a repair part, they say, no, our contract with Samsung will not allow us to sell that. He says, Apple is notorious for doing this with chips in their computers. There's a particular charging chip on the MacBook Pro. There's a mm -hmm. standard version of the part. And then there's the quote, Apple version of the part that sits very slightly tweaked, but it's tweaked enough that it's only required to work in this computer. And that company is, again, under contractual requirement with Apple. It gets even worse. 
there was a company in California, a California-based recycler, that Apple required to recycle spare parts that were still in new condition. Cal this is the quote, California Apple stops providing service after seven years. So this was at seven years, and Apple has warehouses full of spare parts, never used, brand new, rather than selling them out on the marketplace. So like someone like me, says Kyle, who eagerly would have bought them, they were paying the recycler to destroy them. Now, Apple can say, oh, it's for safety, it's for quality, oh, but if something's out of warranty by seven, because it's seven years old, and you have lots of old parts that you're never going to use, why wouldn't you sell them to iFix so they can sell them on to customers to fix their stuff? I don't understand it. Well, and you're going to have to yeah. buy more. St like, it really it just fits to their bottom line, right? Yeah, because um, you need I to buy a new phone. You've got this phone for yeah, seven years. Exactly. What are you, nuts? Get a new phone. Exactly, exactly. Hey, hate America. <laughs> What I love, though, is that the way that things change is that if the culture starts to shift towards that we believe we have the right to fix things, yes. then the, the government will slowly shift because they want to be able to be reelected to we're going to make sure that people can fix things. Again, if they can make money and they can do this as slowly as possible through lobbying, they completely will. And that's why lobbying really should not be allowed, especially with the amounts of money that they're able to donate. But- we are starting to say, you know what? This is mine. I own it. Why would you stop me from being able to open it up and not be able to repair it? It's ridiculous. And that wastefulness, we're also, start, it's starting to become distasteful. Before it was just throw everything out and get something new. And now we're like, oh, wait, it doesn't just disappear into nowhere. It actually ends up somewhere that we're going to have to deal with it again. Like we're all on, we're stuck on this lump of rock floating through space. It's the only lump of rock that we know of that we can take care of. Maybe we should take better care of it. Um, also, uh, I got a flat tire. Yeah, I'm just going to throw this away. Can I get a new car delivered to the house tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I know, I'm, I'm sure somebody can fix it, but there's apparently there's a wheel lock on it. I don't have the key for the wheel lock. Oh, sorry, I'm on a show. Oh, hey, guys. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, fix. Let's, let's, and also, by the way, I got popcorn for the holidays. I did not get a toolkit. I mean, what? what that what, was a couple of years ago. We sent you popcorn? <laughs> Did we really send oh, you yeah. popcorn? Yeah, I got I got like a, a, it was good popcorn too. It was like one of those assorted with all fancy stuff. <laughs> I got assorted chocolates one year. I, I get, you guys always hook me up with something nice, but it's, 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 That's it's, it's Lisa. I'm big, Uncle Leo. That's Lisa. Lisa. Is that what it is? You always send Sometimes me these sweet you, treats. Lisa will come to me and say, sweet just treats. so you know, when Owen's on, we bought him popcorn, <laughs> just so you know. Oh, thanks. It's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it was good stuff. It was good. good stuff. Good. Thank you. Thank her for buying fancy popcorn. Next time we'll send you a toolkit. That was a that was like four or five years ago, I think, Ian. Right? The toolkit. It, it was a while back, but I got to say it it's proved itself many times. Oh, I love that. And at occasion, because you know, you know what it's like when you know a bit about technology. Your tech support for all your friends. But we when bought you put like that five thing or, down on the table and open it up. It's just like, oh, it's, yeah, it's, this guy's serious. We bought like five or six for the house because they keep going missing. And actually, now I have <laughs> a pair. It's hidden. I have a set hidden because I know that somebody will come and get it and use it and not put it back. So it's actually, don't tell anybody. But if you're ever at our house, there's an iFixit toolkit slid behind my printer in my office. <laughs> If you ever, I, if you ever it's, need, you know, it. it's funny. I, I keep an Allen set key set hidden like that because you know when you're working on someone's somebody needs Allen. Oh, can I use that? And then I have and like never three of them again. that are, that are missing. So I have, missing. I have yeah. an Allen key set that is hidden away yep. where I don't. If somebody needs it, I bring it to you. I stand there and watch you do it. I take it back because otherwise it'll be lumped up with um, the other ones that are missing. I actually there had is a theory, theory that I care. Go ahead. The, the IKEA is behind that because they've given up going a Viking these days and <laughs> burning down your settlement, but they'll still ruin your weekend with a missing Allen key. <laughs> so before I um, before I got my fountain pen fetish, which I now is in full blown and it's depressing, but uh, I was big on the Pilot G2 uh, rolling writers. You ever try those? No. And, and, oh, pens. they're really I nice. I want to see yeah, them. They, they're really nice. If you're better than a ballpoint Fluent. pen, it's like a ballpoint pen. Yeah, but it's smooth. It's but super smooth. they would disappear. Premium. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how I live my life, Uncle Lee. I got one right on deck. Look at that. He's got I one. I am buying I see that nice grip. See that nice grip? Amazon. I got, all, but I, got all, I got all the colors, everything. But they the kept disappearing. Colors. So I got a new theory. If you super saturate the house with something that keeps disappearing, eventually, like uh, readers, like those little glasses, if you get enough of them and, and eventually everywhere you look, there'll be a G2 pen or 
a pair of reading glasses, and so you'll never have to worry about it again. So now that's what I do. I saturate the house with iFixit toolkits, G2 pens, that kind of thing. Uh, Uncle Leo, I've, just, I've just real quick. I've already put them in my this Amazon. Is, you already bought this it? Is, <laughs> uh, it's in there. Uh, Uncle Leo, this is exactly... This is exactly why I call you Uncle Leo, because we are family. I have three boxes. I have 300 of these pens in black, Ooh. and I have 48 yeah. rainbow You're colors. You're saturating so the rainbows. house. They're in Ooh, every you got the room. Rainbow They're colors? everywhere. I got the whole rainbow. I'm not, I'm not going to get How up. How many rainbow show, colors? The 20? The, the eight different ones? No, the I have a bigger pack than that. There was a bigger <laughs> pack. My mind's like 12 deep. I have three 12, 12 packs. different colors? But, but I'm just saying, like, that's what you do, Uncle Leo, because you need it. Like, I can't use another pen now. Yeah. So these are in, these are, I got one of these Ooh. in the bathroom right now. They're everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Because <laughs> you, you never know when you the need The environment. To that's my so, key. That's, that's, that. yeah. We, we I don't must have come taught that at an early age. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to come across as a Luddite here, but I mean, because I've just written a couple of birthday cards to send back to the UK, but... It, it occurred to me that this is probably the thing I the, the first things I've written in a month with a pen. You know, the rest of it's all keyboard these days. I know. I you know I have this fantasy that I'm going to develop really good penmanship and and use my beautiful fountain pens. I even buy letterpress cardstock with my name on it, and my address. Having this fantasy that someday I am going to write cards, <laughs> and thank you notes, and I and I never. I still have everything that I, I bought, I went out and bought, I bet they're still on Amazon. You can still buy it. Uh, I wanted a better penmanship. So Amazon had reproductions of these penmanship books from the turn of the last century. Oh, they still sell, sell them. It's called Spencerian. Do you know Spencerian? Did you, what did you learn in school? You went to, in the UK, they must have taught you good penmanship, right? Oh, he's muted. So you're sitting on the mute button, sir. Yeah, no, we learned cursive at school. Cursive. Um, this is a cursive. And were quite literally beaten if you didn't get it right. But but remember, um, the cursive that, that we were all taught, I don't think they teach it. I hope they don't teach it anymore. But when I was taught, was a modified Spencer. The Spencer hand is what, like, Abraham Lincoln would have written in. See, it's very florid. Let me see if I can find this. It was... I mean, honestly, my handwriting these days is worse than a doctor's. So, you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> yeah. The I, mine I, I is, still, my, um, it's like a gorilla wrote it. I still like writing notes. I have notes everywhere, and I find them random. I have notebooks. I still like writing. Um, but Wouldn't honestly, you like to write. be able... I don't know. Look at this. Look at this. Wouldn't you like to be able to write like that? That was the penmanship that See, was... See, I would love to, but the amount of time that it would take... Well, to I bought like, these a lot books. Of things you have to ask, I started right? tracing. Like, are you going to spend the time? Did I, you spend, uh, you know, I, after you know, about so that's the thing. Yeah. I would love to be as well trained in martial arts as Jackie Chan, but I don't feel like spending eight hours a day for the next five years to be able to train it. Right. Like, I just want to be able to do yeah, but this I'm still not going to I'm still not going to attack I'm, you because I'm I know waiting you, for the you computer chip ass. that allows yeah. you to do it. Yeah. Right. Like Coca-Cola <laughs> is in Spencerian Ford, the Ford logo that's in Spencerian. Uh, and I bought this these a reproduction on Amazon of these books with all the workbooks. And I started, but yeah, I never. You don't even sign checks anymore. I don't know why you got pens I know. anywhere. This is you what replaced it, the Palmer <laughs> method. This is what you were taught in school, the Palmer yeah. method, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's ugly. Anyway, just another fantasy, another thing I'll never do. I've got to say, after 40 years of, of, of pounding a keyboard, then my handwriting has gone it's awful. very badly. But that's why I wanted, you know, that's, that's why I wanted to, like, do it right, learn it. Anyway... <laughs> Leo writing the great novel, a shopping list for apples and oranges at the grocery store. Fancy handwriting. <laughs> Four score and seven years ago, we ran out of potato <laughs> chips. Today, I shall sally forth. Um, we all talk about DIY and like, oh, we really wish Apple wouldn't make these phones with everything glued in and disposable. But the question is, will you buy... A product that has screws in it is thicker, is repairable. I w I miss the days when you could get a phone that you could replace the battery, for instance. That's what I want. So yeah. I can have a backup battery in a place where I don't have to. Yeah. I got to carry a battery brick. I have to carry a battery bank with me. I wish I could just swap out batteries or do a hard reset. When your iPhone freaks out on you, you got to let it die, wait nine but days, 
pray to four people and then put it in a, in a steam room for it to come back then, on. Because you can't hardly reset it. These wouldn't be as beautiful and thin and light and gorgeous. Couldn't they be? It could be stuck on, but not stuck on with something that you're never going to be able to get off without like some sort of heat gun. Like they could stick it on so that it was still, you know, you could, you know, take it apart. This is not like they're doing it because that's the easiest way to do it. I did foolishly Samsung buy the Apple making... MagSafe battery. That was. What do you think of it, Leo? Oh, it's so. The little tiny koala backpack sticky. Yeah. It's got a magnet in it and it goes right. Wait, I, I should have brought it. I have it at home. I. Uh, and it, but it's ninety nine dollars, and it, and here's the dep depressing thing, it's made to fit on all iPhone 12, so the mini all the way up to the Pro Max, and it's, it's just a little wart on the Pro Max. It fills up the size of the mini, but it doesn't have much juice in it, so it only charges the Pro Max up like halfway. <laughs> So it's, like you get 50% more battery life with it's your It's not carries. that sticky on. Like I, I shook the phone and it did shake go it off? flying. No. I can shake it off. I'm not even that strong. You have strong. to work hard on it though. It's no. pretty strong. Uh, you know what? The only justification. On if you put it on really nicely. If you were going to buy the puck, you know, the MagSafe charger, which is like 30 bucks. Uh, this can also work as a puck. So you plug it in. And it's a puck as well as a battery, so maybe yeah, and it's cheaper. There's third party options that are cheaper. Oh, Anchor makes also. one. It's a little thicker. Mm. Yeah, there is yeah. A, there are other companies that do the same thing. But being able to take physically take the battery out of your phone that would be the right answer. That's you know, but that that's where we were five years Sam ago. So, Samsung um, made phones that you could pull the battery out and it was still waterproof. You had the rubber seal lining in there, and as I long know. as you snapped it back in, yep. your phone was still waterproof. So even that excuse that they give is pointless. And why do I keep yelling today? Because we are stuck. In a time loop, but it doesn't matter, people. Here's it something that'll make matter. you happy. I suspect no one's going to buy it, but this is an attempt. It's called Framework, the Framework laptop. Frame oh, yes, work. about this. So this, the whole idea is, this is a laptop that is modular, completely parts replaceable, from the keyboard to the to everything. It's all accessible. It it comes with a kit of modules you can customize. Now I have to say, some of these modules are probably proprietary, like that keyboard. So, you know, that's not as good as, like, if it were a generic keyboard. It looks like a pretty nice thin and light laptop. So you notice on the ports, the, the, the outlines show you can take them out. And so you can build it any old way you want it. And yet I'm not tempted. I don't, I don't know, should I get it? Should I run out and get this? It's kind of like the, the, the Google phone that they were going to do where you could yeah. interchangeable modules and right. that sort of thing. It's one of those things that sounds great, but in practice, it, it doesn't quite work for some reason. I'm I, not quite sure you, why. I, I always, initially, I used to buy things you could upgrade, and then I realized I never upgrade them. Maybe that's just what. Well, back in the well, PC case days. Too, why would you yes. upgrade? The thing is about upgrading is once it fails, it'd be like how many Repairing laptops it would be people nice. have had? Yeah. People have had laptops where your HDMI goes out. Now you can't swap that out. This is where that would come into play. Yeah. Or your headphone jack doesn't work. That's where this comes into play. You don't swap things out or upgrade because the product works until it dies completely. But everybody's been in a situation where the, the J key does not work. And I'm like, it's on a laptop. Well, how do I fix it? I take it off and I replace it on a laptop. That's where that comes into having a great value. And yes, you should buy it and review it for the show and do your <laughs> job, Uncle Leo, because that's part of your job. Do your job. That's what you're here for. I used to only buy Lenovo ThinkPads because you could do that with them back in the day, but now everything's glued in just like everybody else. I we don't become lazier though as well. It's not yeah. too bad. Yeah. We, we like to be able to just go to the Apple store and then it comes back and you just don't have to do anything. I think that um, we're there's there's less and less people wanting to be able to repair things and upgrade and and tinker and be able to even have the skills to know how to do it. We've we've become complacent. Alas, I fear it is a pity. I mean, you used to have ha having the static strap was a key thing when you had a oh, PC, yeah. case, PC oh, yeah. case where you were <laughs> you didn't want to fry the RAM when you were upgrading it or the graphics card had to be strapped in, get it done. I do think it's kind of a pity that we're not repairing this stuff more. I, I, I built my computer. I built both of my daughter's computers. I got mm -hmm. this Mac Mini sitting over here, the M1 looking really fine and sexy, and I barely use it. So I'm just saying, there's still builders out here in America. Good. We're still Good. building. Good on Good. you, mate. We're still building. <laughs> <laughs> there's still hope. And, all and, it was, and it was cheaper and more powerful. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 128 gigs of RAM. I got bumping up in here. Would have put me in prison and jail or, or, or broke and debt and homeless if I had put that for Apple. 
I'd had 128 gigs RAM for Apple, I'd be homeless. Oh, right God, now, yeah, so. yeah. And it used to be, you know, it's interesting because it used to be that you could buy a, a MacBook or an Apple device with the minimum amount of RAM and add your own. But of late, Apple has been building the RAM into they the chip. They shut that down. So yep. you can't. There's nothing you can do. It is the way it is. My, my Mac Mini before this, I took it apart. I put it a new hard drive. I put a new RAM. It, it serviced me as a server for double the lifetime. I had that thing for eight years because I could upgrade it. This thing, I'm just looking at it like, okay, you're fast and cute and all. But in like three years, I'm going to be mad at myself for owning it. Have you... Uh, have you um changed your voice uh, do you does anybody have an echo you have an echo georgia you must nope i nope. do not have an echo nobody here nope what you echo, guys are weird echo, echo. <laughs> i've got things called fingers they're really oh, useful oh man i like talking to my hardware well if you had an oh, echo you'd be well, i have an echo i have echoes do yeah. you have yeah, you yeah. you know it has a male voice now oh we're samuel jackson in this household but continue i don't think the echo can do samuel L. jackson but it's not. No. Sure? Try say say sure? uh, say a word. Uh, change your voice. Is it near? But is it near your mic so we can hear it? No, I no. don't. I don't keep it in my office. Okay. I'm smart. I do a lot of damage in here, but it's all front thrust <laughs> in my TV. Um, even my hallways are uh, uh, equipped. Even my bathroom is equipped. I have those little plug-in wall things. That, my house is totally. They're just spying on me everywhere, but except in here. In here. Here's the, 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 here's the new, except you have your phone. Here's a new voice. Yes. See, Apple really has this down. They have really a broad variety of voices, but until now, the Echo had one female voice. Now it has this voice. Traffic on your commute looks pretty clear. The fastest route takes about 16 minutes via South Jackson Street and Bourne Avenue South. It's a little... Still creepy. Small market news announcery kind of... And but I here's the best. That's a, that's a huge market for this, though, for celebrities to actually go out oh, and, and do this stuff. Yeah. I would give a lot of money to have John Cleese doing my traffic descriptions. <laughs> they uh, right now it's only Shaq and Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> 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 but the most important thing to me, uh, they you can now change the wake word. For a long time, it was A L E X A, computer. Amazon computer's terrible, by the way. I, I have computer in my office. It, it, I'm talking about computers all the time. All that does is wake up. So computer's out. Echo's not so bad. Amazon's boring. Now you can call it Ziggy. And I immediately yeah. I immediately change the voice to a male voice, and I call him Ziggy, which I like. I don't know if mm -hmm. the celebrity voices are active yet. Those are coming. Sam you, Samuel Jackson works. Like, he cusses me out occasionally. I asked him to tell me a joke or what's going on. I don't know. I paid, I got $1.99. Samuel Jackson's on there. Is that still there? I thought Mine's that was still there. Was that a Google thing? No. It's a, oh, it's yeah. A Amazon. You say, Echo introduced me to Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, I got him. And then you pay five bucks. Yeah. Well, I, I got him on sale for $2.99, but I got him. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of my party tricks. I get him over there cussing and talking trash. When come over. It's fun. Does he, does he say anything about M or M MFing snakes oh. on the MFing Echo? Uh, no, no. He, he told me to get the uh, F up. You know what I mean? With did my he? Arm, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. He be cussing. He, he be cussing? The worst part about it is he doesn't. It's so weird. Like, the first time I try to get him to cuss, I know I could get him to cuss. When someone's there, the first time he won't say it. I've got to, like, do it. When I'm home alone with him, he be cussing up a storm. I'm like, what, what is going on? Why are you? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like he knows. They know what's going on. Apple doesn't have um, celebrity voices yet, but they do have... They, I think they're trying... Honestly, I think they're trying to make it more like um, Scarlett Johansson and, and her, you know, kind of like... Mm -hmm. It's a it's a robot, but it's a it's a it's a real like it's you could almost feel like it's a human in your machine. Let me play. Except is, she never understands what yeah, you're saying. She's dumb. She's a dumb. You know, yeah. Scarlett yeah. Johansson was pretty smart. She was too smart because in the end she goes yeah. off to be with the other. Right. It, it also doesn't give you. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. So that's this is American choices. That's voice one. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Is that Peppy? Isn't she peppy? Too peppy. When That's I'm in the morning, really that might annoying. be too peppy. Yeah. What? Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice right. you'd like me to use. This is the voice I use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. It's a little... That is... Nah. That's annoying. It's a little nah. urban. It's a little like... Hi, I'm Siri. John, Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Seems like, you know, a skateboarder or something. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Yeah, I like... So, I, I use voice Hi, three. I'm Siri. 
choose the voice you'd like me to it scared use. the hell out of my daughter. She said, who's that? <laughs> yeah, who's in the house? That, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm OG on that and because especially because it's only useful for three things. Uh, calling someone, doing my uh, uh, calendar, and uh, timers. Numbers. Other than that, it's timers. like kitchen uh, timers. I use a lot yeah, of timers. Yeah. 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 You ask yeah. it to do anything. That, it's it is like, useful for that. Yeah. I, my favorite thing to hear is, I found this on the web. Yeah. I th- I oh, have no I idea know. what you're talking about. If I wanted about, to this... look on the web, yes, I would. You don't notice what I found on the web about, about you that. You ask it a random question, it'll be like, all the I time. found this on the web. And it brings me all these Wolf it's Media, useless. Wikipedia things, like yeah. 92 things. It no, it's useless. It doesn't help me at all. Yeah. No, this is my problem with Google, with Google. I mean, I love the Pixel phone. I've been using one for years. But my goodness, the assistant is annoying as all hell. It's just like, here's something I found on the web. Show me the news. No, 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 no. You've got to scroll through very options to get through that. <laughs> You would have thought that they would have gone a lot further with virtual assistants than where really, they are right yeah, now. Yeah, we're yeah. stalled, they aren't really we? They really have not evolved. They, I, I still feel that Siri has a head injury. Um, she <laughs> suddenly pops up at, at any point in time and asks me random questions. I've had been in session and suddenly she's, you know, Oh, that's, up God, as if that's not, so you have one. Oh, it's your phone. So you I can't... don't usually have it on, yeah. but other people will bring their phone in and it will talk to us while we're doing a session. It's quite inappropriate. And she'll say stuff that she shouldn't be saying in the middle of a session. But no, mine is turned completely off. Yeah. Um, but you can't help but if still. your clients have it on. Exactly. You could be using that nice G- Pilot G2 to write notes now. As I, I have, I have ordered the Pilot <laughs> G2. I write notes by hand. I need nice. They're very. Pens, it's so. very quiet. You don't want a squeaky pen. No, I like I like the, the ink has to be smooth. It yeah, has to be beautiful. a nice You'll feeling. You'll love it, right, Owen? She'll love it. Welcome, right? welcome to the dark side. <laughs> oh, I can't wait! Don't wait. <laughs> All right, You're let's in take the a basket. little. Let's uh, take a little break now that we've equipped you with pens. Owen J J Stone, O Doctor, IQMZ dot com, uh, Georgia Dow, Anxiety Videos dot com. Those great videos, not just for anxiety, but sleeping, parenting, everything, everything you need to get good at. And uh, Ian Thompson, news editor. Still, are you still the news editor at the the Register dot com? Uh, well, I mean, U.S. editor. But to be honest, we're US a very editor. flat, flat st- infrastructure. Everyone still calls me. I'm not going to say that word. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't stand He's on ceremony. He's that poofter in charge of news. Uh, now I'm thinking about the W word. Oh, but I'm not quite mind. sure I can you say can that. Say wanker. It's okay. We allow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no one knows what we're talking about. Our <laughs> <laughs> Our show today. Actually, here's a technology I really love. In fact, I used it for a long time when it was PillPack. Amazon bought PillPack, and now they have created Amazon Pharmacy. This is the best pharmacy ever. I mean, first of all, I think we all learned, thanks to COVID, it's better to have it mailed to you. It's better not to go somewhere and wait in line for something. When you can get it in a day or two, in fact, if you're Amazon Prime, you can get it in second day uh, like that. It's just easier. Amazon Pharmacy saves you time. They easily work with your doctor and they deliver medication. And always, by the way, the right medication to your door. You can get the meds you need. You don't have to leave the house. One less errand. And by the way, more safety, more accuracy for you. Amazon Pharmacy is freaking amazing. It'll save you time. Delivering to your door. No more waiting in line at the pharmacy. You can choose between 30 and 90 day supplies. I love that. I, I hate it when they send me five pills. No. I, give me a month's worth. If you're a Prime member, you can get six months worth of prescription medication. How about that? It's also easy. You can have your doctor's office send your next prescription right to Amazon Pharmacy. And then they coordinate with your doctor. And I think this is a good thing to ensure that everything's accurate and you're getting what you need. Because, eh, you know, in the old days with the doctor's handwriting on a script, you wouldn't know what the hell you were getting. Uh, <laughs> so Amazon makes sure you're getting the right thing. And that's one of the things that PillPack technology does, which is really great. They have uh, very smart technology that identifies every pill as they put it in the package. Make sure you've got exactly the right dose, the right pill, everything. You can use your insurance. Amazon Pharmacy works with almost every insurance plan nationwide. Plus, if you're an Amazon Prime member... And I love this. Most pharmacies do not do this. They'll give you upfront pricing. They'll show you what it would cost with your insurance copay or your price without insurance. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get discounts when you're buying without insurance. 
and free two-day delivery. So Prime members often get meds for as low as a dollar a month, even if you're paying without insurance. So that's really nice. That's really cool. Your medical information is always, of course, protected. You don't have to worry about privacy. They, they keep it inside the pharmacy. They never share your personal health data outside of their pharmacy to anywhere, including within Amazon. You can always speak with a pharmacist. They have pharmacists on staff 24-7. So you, if you've got questions or need advice, that's a pharmacy that's there whenever you need it. And the pricing is so clear. I just I think it's great that you know up front, before you pay a penny, what it'll cost, and you can even do the comparison. Amazon Prime members can save on prescription medication when not using insurance. With medication as low as a dollar a month, plus free two-day delivery. You want to know more? Amazon.com slash twitrx. Amazon dot com slash twit r x uh, this is really the easy way to get the medications you need i always say pills but it could be other things as well obviously amazon.com slash twit r x thank you amazon for your support of this week in tech all right this is personal this is just personal i'm gonna i'm gonna say it's just me no one else will care about this Maybe, Georgia, you listen. Do you listen to a podcast called uh, Call Her Daddy? Nope. You ever hear of that? No, I haven't. Alex, Alex Cross, you ever hear of her? Big news. She just, she was at Barstool, started the podcast in 2018. That was, what, three years ago, right? Uh, pretty much, I haven't moved from this chair since 20, 2005. But she, three years she's been doing this. She's a big influencer on Instagram, 2.2 million followers, very well known. I think, I asked you, Georgia, because I think it's a female slanted podcast, but I think it's also for 18 to 25-year-old women. It's not for older women. I listened to it. I, she just got a deal with Amazon. They stole her away from Barstool Sports. One podcast a week, $20 million a year for three years. $20 million a year for three years. Wow. Good Lord. <laughs> well, now, it is a Spotify exclusive, and I guess it makes sense for Spotify because uh, you have to use the app. If they're selling ads, they're going to be able to give the advertiser a lot more information. If, they're, if you're a subscriber, they make money from you that way. So maybe they think they're going to make that much. I actually, I thought, wow, this must be an amazing podcast. So I thought I'd listen to it. It's very much like the old days of podcasts where it's a guy just talking or gal just talking. And she's, she swears every third word, worse than a wanker. Uh, <laughs> she's, uh, she's funny. Uh, she's got a great personality. What I think, in a way, I, at first I was like, how come I didn't get that? <laughs> get that? But then I realized, first of all, for a lot of reasons, but what she's done that I think is really great is not only, it's not only good for podcasting, it's good for just the notion of a, of a person, a normal person, talking into a microphone and connecting with the audience. She really does. It really connects with the audience. It's very clear. Um, but it is a big news story because according to the Wall Street Journal, she signed a deal that's bigger than pretty much any baseball player, basketball player, <laughs> Formula One driver. <laughs> uh, oh. I mean, I'm a huge Formula One nut, but let's face it, most drivers really aren't worth listening to. It's just like, yes, <laughs> we had yeah. a great race. No, We'd like to no. work on the car and the they, aerodynamic package. They don't get paid for talking. They get paid for driving, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Joe, and, t yeah. T you know, Spotify spent a half billion dollars. They've got 100 million to Joe Rogan, now 60 million to her. Um, so she, she, Again, great for her. I never begrudge anybody making a bunch of money. But she also had bar stools to amplify her voice. Like my daughters listen to that podcast. And the one, the one time I heard it, I was like, what is that? Because she listens to podcasts and go to sleep. Like I asked her about the show. She's like, I don't even know. I just like listen to people talk. And she usually listens to female podcasters. So they're just getting free views off of her because she passes out after 15 minutes listening to it. But she had a baked in uh, ramp up help audience. And not to say she's not good or great or whatever, but Barstools is pretty large, and that voice that she's got, hopefully, is worth the money they paid her, because that's a lot of money. And either way, good for her. Get that check. CTC, cut the check. Uh, yeah, and, and by the way, I think the problem was that Barstool did not, I, I think I remember that Barstool offered her a half million a year, and she said no. And she worked out her one-year contract, 
and then uh, shopped herself. And she's got a big Hollywood agent, I think IAC or somebody like that. And obviously it worked. Spotify is really trying to own the, the podcast market. Yes. Um, so yeah. Spotify, could, Spotify needs something to have value to give to people. So hopefully this is one more thing to add. It's just like Disney Plus. People keep saying, oh, why? they? Because they have to put out new content. I'm not going to sit here and watch 101 Dalmatians from 1984 42 times a week. Okay. You've got to give me Loki and uh, the Bad Batch something every week or every series to keep it going. So I have something new to go back to. Because after you go watch the initial things that are nostalgic to you, or unless you have a kid watching Frozen 92 times a day, there's no value unless you're putting new things on there. So that's what Spotify is trying to do. They're trying to catch lightning in a bottle and, and put more shows and products on there to keep people coming in and wanting to pay that subscription. Yeah, it, the only thing, and I say good for podcasting, it's good for podcasting in the sense that it, it really shows it's a, it's a real business. But it's bad in a way for podcasting. It makes it harder for non-aligned podcast um, podcasters like me because it's hard to sell it to advertisers who say, yeah, but with Spotify, we get all the information. They don't know that your daughter's asleep, so I can tell them that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they may be but sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> but they but do know they, when your daughter's listening, they know who is listening. It's her. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, it's it's... One of those things, too, you know, you just walk by your kid's room, and I specifically know that show because she does cuss a lot. And I was like, man, because she usually has her headphones on. So, like, who who is in here cussing like that? Are you on the phone? Oh, yeah, she and cusses she, every she, third word. Yeah, and she was like, she's like, no, nah, I, I listen to podcasts. This is one of the things I listen to to go to sleep. She's like, I usually don't listen to her because she cusses a lot, but I was just trying to put it on. I was like, okay. I think so. young women love her. And, and you know, I uh, we was talking she's, with, with uh, Stacey uh, Higginbotham about this. She said, you know, it's empowering women. It's good. Women should be able to get these big deals, you know, it's not, not just the boy. The bro exactly. Brooks. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I don't want It's interesting how podcasting has moved, though, in that, you know, it was a big thing in the early noughties and then just died. Um, now, you kept up with it, Leo, but a lot of people well, dropped out of the market there. That's and the now it's coming back in. Yeah, but it's changed. So, I. Uh, you know, I th I don't know. I you know, of course, after I heard this, I started to question my choices. But I uh, I think that I was so influenced by old media that I basically made Twit kind of a old media style TV slash radio network, right? Uh, and and the shows are focused on content, and you know, the hosts are ex have expertise and that kind of thing. And there was at the same time we started in two thousand four. There were plenty of podcasts that were just people talking. And you're right, a lot of those went by the wayside. But what was happening, I I think what has happened is that it's the rise of celebrity podcasting and the rise of big companies. And I think soon podcasting will be dominated by three companies. iHeartMedia, the big radio broadcaster, which is big in a podcasting, um, Spotify, and Apple, which is already starting to make a play. They launched a podcast subscription Spot? Did I say Spotcast? A podcast <laughs> subscription uh, feature. And I think ultimately they're going to start producing podcasts and they will even sign podcasters because it's a kind of content. It's just, you know, why not? It's like Apple TV Plus, Apple Podcast Plus. So yeah. I feel like that's, it's, it's almost the professionalizing of podcasting mm -hmm. in, in a way. It's the commercializing of podcasting. Oh, uh, tell, tell Lisa, I'm still waiting on... Uh a uh, twit after dark with O Doctor, you know what I mean? Just I, well, I could talk for days. For I'm you. now thinking maybe uh, we should have gone more toward person, less towards um, content, content and more towards more personality, towards right? Hey, well, look, look, okay, keep keep the Hawaii trip money going, keep the gravy train going, mm -hmm. and just start sprinkling in some other things and see how it helps float your boat. The, a, ri a rising tide lifts all ships, Uncle Leo. Let, let's not get too offhand, okay? Hey, you're, let's you're, let's keep doing what we're doing, but. <laughs> But I think that it, it also shows how, you know, after the pandemic, a lot of people wanted to have that company. They were alone. They were stuck yeah, inside. True. And so a podcast was that company while yeah. you did other things to keep your mind busy so that you wouldn't overspin on stuff that's going to make you feel really stressed out. And so I think that a lot of podcasts got some really big push during that period of time. I have a lot of people that listen to podcasts before they go to sleep, but also when they're doing everything else, they're doing their taxes and stressing out, they want to listen to something, not watch something where they have to pay attention. Exactly. But just to kind of have that company through the day of some warm, happy, fuzzy, or entertaining voice to be able to take their mind off of that the sky is literally falling. Right. 
Oh, maybe there's a future in that. <laughs> uh, you see, I'm, I'm I'm all for people getting paid for their for their content, but there was a very worrying story in the Guardian this week where um, a, a marketing agency approach, approached YouTube people to push anti-COVID stuff against the the Pfizer vaccine and the AstraZeneca vaccine vaccine and they were offered 2000 euros a month just to read out these stats and they called them out on it but unfortunately some people actually did spread this stuff around you know at least leo you have some editorial control and 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 quality checking well and and the other actually i like podcasts there's there's a whole separate kind of almost parallel track with youtube videos and youtube video stars I mean, look at Georgia Dow, right? Uh, that's what you're you're doing. It's yeah. different in some ways, though. The coverage, the tech reporting, the reviews—they're very much more. They're very much more personality driven, maybe because it's video. Um, I don't know. Uh, that is that podcasting, no, or something separate? So to me, it's the same thing. If you're, if I'm watching. Is this show per se? Like I, I, I'm we're on video right now. Right, but, uh, most people listen to it. When I'm on YouTube, like I watched recently, like five or six of Georgia shows. I know what she looks like. Huh. I know what the content is, and she's. I can just walk away from it and not have to look at it. I can listen to it and get the information. Now, am I podcasting? I mean, I don't really. I, I'll tell you right now. I make podcasts. I don't listen to podcasts at all. If it's on video, though. I like checking in, seeing what's going on, and then I listen to it. So I'm more of a visual person. So it's kind of the same thing. They're talking and they're running their mouth. And more so now, people are doing podcasts on YouTube because they know that there's an audience for that that only want audio, but they're doing the docu-series thing where you record it on video anyway, yeah. and you get two pieces of the pie. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's, it all depends on what people want. You got to give it to them everywhere, Leo. You got to be out here twitching and TikTok well, and Snapchatting. My, and, that was and, what and, I would tell people. YouTubing. And it was always my philosophy, and it's why we do video. People thought I was crazy because it's a lot more complicated and expensive and difficult. But I thought, well, you should give it to them in any format. they, uh, Wherever they are, you should give it to them wherever yeah. they are and however they want. Hmm. Okay, the value of an ampersand. <laughs> Google, yes. Google. So actually, this happened to Jeff Jarvis uh, last week. Google pushed out an update to Chrome OS. Uh, it hit Jeff Jarvis's Chromebook. He couldn't log in. He thought, did I do something stupid? Did I forget my password? I don't understand what happened. It turned out Google pushed out a bad update, 91.0.4472.165. And it had a typo. Now, they didn't, Google has never revealed this. But thanks to some sleuth work by Android Police and a Redditor named Elitist Ferret, uh, I think we found out what happened. They put out a new build, version 1.167, which fixes the issue. But until they fixed it, uh, people either couldn't get into their Chromebook or would have to power wash it and start all over. And if you had something on the hard drive, that would be bad news. Or you'd done a lot of setup with Linux or something, that would be bad news. So here's the, here's the bug. Wow. And this will make sense to you if you have done any programming. In most programming languages, including C++, which, which is what Chrome OS is written in, uh, the AND statement, the logical AND, is written with two ampersands. Ampersand, ampersand. So if you, uh, you, know, you want to say, if the, if the password is in the password database and the user is... Uh, logged in or not logged in, then log him in, something like that. They left out one of the ampersands. So instead of two, it was just one, which is not um, a, it, not a legal C++ statement, but C++ is unfortunately <laughs> not exactly the safest language in the world. And it compiled just fine and it ran just fine, but it had the upshot that you never got to the second statement. It was always the first statement. There it is. It's hard to read. It's a little blurry because of that one missing ampersand. So if key data has value and the key data label is empty, then return key data label. You never got to that second part. So it never executed. So you were never able to log in. Now, the real question is, how the hell did this get through 
Three that, testing channels, Canary, Dev, and Beta. That's the question. <laughs> you, you, the whole time you've been talking about how does this happen? How does that happen? There's checks on top of checks on top of checks. And you push that it's how? Like someone and changed it the last second. It could be. I don't know. It could <laughs> like be somebody. Last minute, somebody I'm hit, just going to fix this. and hit or, or they had it open entry. and they accidentally hit backspace or something. And nothing should ever be auto update. No, ever. No. Ever. Because at least you get to catch this in some kind of wave. When you just have everybody do it, you're just something like this happens. As opposed to, hey, we got an update. Go do it if you want. Oh, shoot. 32,000 people just got screwed over. At least it wasn't 32 million. You know, that's it's kind, bad. It's kind of wild. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I, I mean, can't it's, it's the same happened. sort of thing you see, though, with Microsoft patches in that they will push out patches to consumers first and then to offices later, <clears throat> commercial licensees later, um, because we are their test bed. Um, and, yeah, in Google's case, it was a bit unfortunate, but unless you turned your Chromebook off and turned it back on again, it wasn't a massive issue at first. I think that's maybe why it didn't get it went undetected because the testers maybe were all logging in some other way or never turned their Chromebook off or yeah I think it must have gone in at the last minute and as a, a, a Reddit comment uh, suggested any if you ran it through a linter which is kind of a standard process with programs to check for typos it would have found it immediately um, I don't it's amazing that this got through. It's, a, yeah. it's amazing that this got through. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I spoke to a Microsoft how, how, test through it. Sorry, after sorry, you, George. It, well, you know, it shows how, how just a little tiny thing can kind of stand still all the technology that we use. Yeah. And how, like, one little tiny mistake, someone sneezes and then hits enter and they don't go through another testing, can really just stop your car, your phone, your computer, your work, everything. <sighs> and then there's Akamai, which effect. was down. Actually, this was good for Akamai. We should mention Akamai as a sponsor. But they went down um, a couple of days ago, and their DNS Edge DNS product went down. Again, you know, little mistake somewhere. They fixed it within, I think, 45 minutes or half an hour. But uh, it just shows how many people use Akamai. Because well, I mean, everybody lost their stuff. I mean, I'm on the outages down. email list, and that blew up like Hiroshima. I mean, it was just like, what the hell's going on? Where are we? You know? LastPass was down. Twitter was down. Uh, even some Amazon stuff was down. Um, yeah, just, uh, you know, probably they said that we were, we, we, uh, we, we uploaded an update and it failed. And oh, we, whoops, fixed it. Do, is this a bad thing, or is I mean, this is it's this kind of thing that uh, people who say we shouldn't be doing all this cloud stuff, we shouldn't be moving to the cloud. This is a perfect example why it's a terrible idea. Is that is that the takeaway from this? Is that it's a terrible the, idea? The takeaway is don't force updates. That's the takeaway. That's you know because people are going to make mm -hmm. mistakes, whether it's a cloud or Microsoft or even Apple, they, they they could potentially make a mistake. So the the real thing is don't force updates on people. Well, well but this, you should in this case, just the rely on the cloud. You should have your stuff and rely on the cloud. There but should I probably be a it, fallback DNS service. I think you're yes, right. That would, there should be there. Sh everything that you have should be saved somewhere where you have control over it, and you should probably yeah, have it on the cloud. Yeah. Because we were just we're just so behooved to all the technology that we use. If I lost everything on my computer, I, really, I don't even know how I would contact all of my people to be able to let them know that I can't contact all my people. Delta Airlines, British Airways. Capital One, GoDaddy, Vanguard, UPS, LastPass, AT&T, and Costco. Just a subset, small subset of all the companies whose websites were either down or completely down or slow because of um, this error. Um, I, You know, it's not going to be perfect. I don't think this is a case of updates not being auto or being automatic or not because the update was merely to Akamai's stuff. Uh, I think maybe better QC, better quality control in general, right? Yes, sir. And whatever can, you do, can can we can we talk about another story of, of things that shouldn't happen? Yeah, I think yeah. I know where you're going with this one. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, go ahead and go where I'm going. You, are, see, 
Are you going to the defunct video hosting site flooding the Washington Post with hardcore porn? Hey, you see where I'm at? Hey, things are, I things had a are feeling. shouldn't happen. I had a things feeling. Things shouldn't happen. But this is great marketing. <laughs> this is great business. This is how you get things done in America. This is capitalism <laughs> right here. You find a defunct property and you redirect it to get this guapole and you disturb the entire internet in the process. So Carry on. At one point, there were competitors to YouTube. Uh, they've all given up by now, but there was a company called VidMe, founded in 2014. It only lasted a few years. It was shuttered in 2017. But a number of uh, big sites used VidMe for embedded video on their site. VidMe, when it went out of business, lost the domain. The domain was purchased by Five Star Porn HD... And they, and they started putting porn on the Huffington Post, New York Magazine, the <laughs> Washington Post. These are old articles. I doubt a lot of people saw them. You'd have to be looking, you know, for pretty old stuff. Articles that were from 2014 to 2017. Um, I like this, though. Vice found a New York Magazine article about House Majority Leader John Boehner's creepy kissy face. And... <laughs> Instead of a video of the creepy kissy face, there's, there's a five-star HD porn video. Uh, here's one on the Huff Post. Pharma bro Martin Shkreli, remember him? Says he's been yeah. permanently banned from Twitter. And there there you go. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why he was banned. There you go. <laughs> I think he's in jail now, isn't he? I don't, I, I'm not sure, but yeah. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, these things happen. I'm sure the problem is it's the kind of thing you wouldn't notice necessarily right away unless you're looking at old news stories. Yeah. Thank goodness for Twitter, though, because I'm sure somebody <laughs> tweeted it and then brought it to the attention of the respective parties. <laughs> Let's take a little, uh, little break here, and uh, we have lots more still to come with our guests. We had a fun week. I didn't see it, but I hear it was a good week. No, was I here for this week? I can't even remember. Was <laughs> was. Was I on Oh, no, I was here this week. We've got a little... You know what? This will jog my memory. A little mini documentary about this week's shows. Earlier today, I saw from Sean, I'm oh, the Sean. Man. <laughs> oh, that's me. Who else knew Leo Laporte was in the Hall of Presidents at Disney World? That does look like me. Previously on Twit iOS today. I have the MagSafe battery. I've actually had it for a couple of days, but I have a, a Max iPhone here as well. Um, and so people can see the difference. And, you know, it fits really nicely on this device um, and it works really well. Smart tech today. It's time for ALEXA, the Google Assistant, and Siri to swear. So this is a Wired article that says that, you know what? I think it's okay if voice assistants swear. Windows Weekly. Microsoft yep. finally admits it's killing the stores for biz and EDU. And because it's a ZDNet story, I'm thinking it's a Mary Jo Foley story. You called Everyone, this. I called this. A year ago, I wrote this. Everybody on Twitter said I didn't know what I was talking about. I was crazy. Where was I getting my information? It was obviously wrong. And today, it has been announced. Oh, so <laughs> me, that's me on Discord. Whoever just put that up. Beyonce doing a little hair flip. That's uh, me right now. Twit. If I had hair, yeah, I would be flipping it be right flipping. now. Yes. I was here for that week. <laughs> I, re I remember that now. It's all coming back to me. That's why we make these little videos. Leo, here's what it was this week. Oh, I, I remember that. Yeah. When did I get back from Hawaii? Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was on vacation. Did I see the shows? Was you, I here for the you, shows? You, do you, I can't but, remember. But honestly, when, was, when you get back from island? vacation a few days later, do you remember... If you were here, like few, uh, no. no or no? Oh, those Depends those how good Bezos, vacation those, was. <laughs> those Bezos problems you have in Uncle Leo. Those Bezos problems. <laughs> it was. I, I would. I wouldn't know. know. I, I get a lot hey, of heat for space. taking a vacation. Hey, hey, look, 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 Don't mean, people when, take vacations? Hey, what? It's uh, not. Uh, I'm not a billionaire for crying what, out. What? What's? Uh, I wouldn't tell about the pictures, Uncle Leo. I'm just saying. I don't. I don't oh see you from God. Saint Lucia to Istanbul. I saw you in a volcano one time. I don't know if it's photoshopping. 
I've seen you coast to coast Key oh, West Chicago. Okay, oh, I'm just saying. That's what, oh, that's what stop my biggest it. problem. You know? <laughs> You know, it is what it is. I'm not even a $20 million heir. Hey, hey, I don't begrudge you. People don't yell at Alex, Alex Cooper for getting hey. $60 million. Hey, hey. Weren't when you, you were having you that li- steak that was covered in gold leaf? Didn't oh, I see it? Oh, yes, the but it's edible. Mm-hmm, okay. mm-hmm. Hey, when, you, thought, when you get as old that. as you, Uncle Leo, you deserve it, okay? I know Lisa deserves it, but when you get to your age, Uncle Leo, go enjoy the Actually, finer parts of the world. I am going to point enjoy this life. out. This, this one was on Lisa. She paid for it. It was to celebrate her son's graduation from high school. She said, what do you want to do? She said, he said, I want to go to Hawaii. So she paid for uh-huh. the whole thing. So don't uh-huh. congratulations. Don't yell at me. Yell, tell Lisa she shouldn't be taking expensive things. Oh, we we, we kind of have the same idea, Uncle Leo. Uh, my, my daughter just graduated the eighth grade. Yeah. And I said, I said, what do you want to do? And she said, well, before the pandemic, we were supposed to go down to Miami for a weekend. There you and go. The shut down. So you know what I'm doing, Uncle Leo? Bienvenido a Miami. Her, 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 no, no. Where better than that, Uncle Leo. Better than that. Better I'm than Miami? Her, her, I'm taking on her first flight. You know what we're doing? We're going uh-huh. to San Diego. Then we're oh, going to drive nice. to L.A. Oh, that's better. Then we're better. going to fly up to San Francisco, see a guy at Petaluma maybe on a Sunday. Oh. And then we're going to fly out to Austin, Texas, get us some good old barbecue. And then we're going to go home after a 10-day Holy cow. Awesome. I'm just saying, as Lisa that had a good awesome. idea. I told you, we're on the Holy same cow. Frame. Uncle That's man, we, phenomenal. I'm, so I'm uh, just save me a seat there. Don't put the table up high. I like the table low. And make sure you have a good drink for me. And uh, 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 make the guest room available. And and I'll be out there. All right. It's all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting excited just thinking about it. <laughs> it, it was too much, Uncle Leo. Calm down, calm down. Somebody get this guy. A are glass you co- of water. are you coming out for VidCon? No. no, I'm 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 just for the kid. I'm not gonna. You're the only stop that's gonna be non having fun seeing people doing things. I mean, I hear you're fun and all, but I mean, you know what I'm saying. I would love to see you, and I would love to see I, your daughter. I know, I know. Thank She's her for excited. the soap. I told her. She's like, yeah. oh, we could go. I could go on the show. I was like, you're not gonna be on the show, but you could sit in there. <laughs> you can watch it. I love uh, BritBox, by the way. I just want to say. Oh, I'm a subscriber. Yes. yes. Wonderful. You get to see all these. What was the show you, I keep, I got to write this down because you've recommended a show on BritBox many times. Oh, what is it? Spaced? Um, is that on there? Yeah, yeah. I think Spaced. Yeah, some spaced good, is well worth a look. Good British. Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister yes. if you haven't seen those. Yes, those are good. Very like much those. worth yes. it. Yes, yes, yes. So but, uh, if you are a BritBox subscriber, you might want to check your bill because it's $6.99 a month, but apparently a large number of people were charged seven hundred fifty-seven dollars for the month of July. What the hell? I need to check wow. my bank account. I hadn't even heard of this. Uh, they say uh, we are aware <laughs> that a small, <laughs> small percentage. Hey, sorry, are you doing a cold of, British accent at this of point? Our <laughs> subscribers in the United States and Australia experienced an overcharge by our billing vendor yesterday. We took immediate action to correct the mistake by contacting all affected BritBox subscribers and issuing them refunds. Although a number of people whose bank, you know, balance went to low zero and couldn't pay the, their bills and so forth were a little more upset uh, than that. But less than 5,000 users. Uh, oh, good grief. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll tell you, there's nothing worse than that, that price change. So I, you know... I had Hootsuite for since its inception. I know the owner. I met him. He's like, here, take this. I have full power. And I've only been paying $5 a month for the life of the Oh, service. you are and, lucky. And, and I, yeah. I am lucky until last month when my $5.99 yeah. went to $95. Yeah. I'm like, Who, who's charging me $95? Ooh, that's the normal what? price. I was like, I was like that's the, I'm not regular people. Just you had the I'm, early adopter price. And and the worst part about it is, like, I do a lot of stuff for other companies. So I, I, start, I, I make money off of it. I, it pays for itself. But I felt so bad. I literally was like, I, ha- I must... I must text and message the owner and ask him why <laughs> am I paying oh, the regular price? Do you not love me anymore? What, what did I do? I I'm sorry, but our new CFO said we exactly. have to take all the influencers so, uh, off so, somebody the trough. new came yeah. in there and yep. kicked me, and I was like, yep. I, I've lived so long for so cheap, I can't even, I, I'm not the type of person to complain, because I know I've been living off the cow. But it, it <laughs> shot, I was like, is, is there, what, what, who, who did that? Why? 
that was and that was only ninety dollars. Seven hundred. I be I be punching screens. That's <laughs> like, mean. What are you doing? <laughs> Father Brown, that's a good one. Yes. Oh, definitely. Uh, definitely. Father Ted, you mean? Father Ted. Sorry. Oh, Father Ted is an absolute yeah. classic. classic. Yeah. Yeah. Our show today, I just thought I'd mention that. So check your bill. Our show today has <laughs> been a public Cheers, service announcement. Uh, I, I have to check mine, too, because I am... I've just checked, and they haven't actually taken the money out, but, damn it, that would have been a good story if they had. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God! Our show today brought to you by Worldwide Technology and HP. E. Hewlett Packard Enterprise. WWT is at the forefront of innovation, working with clients all over the world to transform their businesses. At the heart of WWT lies the ATC, the Advanced Technology Center. Lisa and I visited that uh, last March. It was the last thing we did before COVID, and it is amazing. It's there in St. Louis. So WWT is a partner to businesses who want to use technology to improve their business. And man... What a great partner. They use this advanced technology center. It's a research and testing lab. with has technologies from all the big OEMs, all the disruptors, more than half a billion dollars in equipment. And their engineers use this to spin up proofs of concept, to test things, to learn about things, to, 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 to see how these solutions work before they bring them to you. And they are amazing. But here's the best thing. You can use it too. That is Amazing. The Advanced Technology Center offers hundreds of hours of on-demand and schedulable labs, like, for instance, HPE's Primera Storage Lab, labs representing the newest advances in multi-cloud architect. Everything you need to know, security, networking, primary and secondary storage, data analytics, AI, DevOps, and so much more. So the, their engineers use these labs, but so can you. You can try things. You can learn about things. It'll help you choose the best solution. It'll help you work with a with WWT. So, and you know what I love about WWT is they are they work with you from beginning to end. They start with strategy. They understand business. So they start with your goals, your business strategies. They help you find the right technology. They help you integrate it get it into your system, and then they stay there to help you to support and training throughout the entire process. With ATC, you can start that process by testing out products and solutions before you go to market. You can, And it's not just the hands-on labs, by the way. There's technical articles. There's expert insights. There's demonstration videos. There's white papers. All the tools you need to stay up to date with the latest technology. And it's, it's, it's great because they virtualized it. They did this last year, and it's amazing Members of the ATC platform can access these resources anywhere in the world, any time of the day or night. And while you're there, by the way, you should also check out events and communities. We did an event there when we were out there. It was so much fun. More opportunities to learn about technology trends, to hear about the latest research and insights from their experts. They've got an amazing streaming facility there and an auditorium. It's incredible. Whatever your business needs, WWT can deliver scalable, tried, and tested, tailored solutions for you. WWT, bringing strategy and execution together to make this brave new world happen. Learn more about WWT, the ATC, and to gain access to all their free resources, wwt.com slash twit. Create a free account on their ATC platform. They're one of the best, they're one of the biggest, wwt.com slash twit, and no one else has a lab like this. wwt.com slash twit. Um... Did you get the Hootsuite deal back, or did did you have to start paying more money for it? I, I again, I felt bad re-asking for my deal back, so I'm just paying for it. As I say it out loud, I, at least to make the attempt to be like, "Hey, brother, I mean, I know you were tired of being a CEO, but maybe you could tell tell somebody you still love me and put me back <laughs> on the plane." You know? So, if you're listening, Hootsuite, yeah. come on, man. I think yeah. we use Hootsuite. Come up. It's a it's a social media uh, tool, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So you can just cross-platform do everything from one hub. Or one of the few remaining uh, options you have that are uber, uber, uber expensive because it's big business. It is. Lots of changes uh, going on at Twitter. I wonder, in fact, if Twitter is going to start offering these kinds of uh, solutions. They ought to. I don't understand why they're letting that uh, letting that go. 
Um, it's very, we discussed this before. There's so many things that Twitter could be doing that they just, they're almost like Google anymore. They keep dabbling and doing things and then taking it away. Yeah. Like th they have the tip service where people could, instead of using Patreon or something like that, you could use it through Twitter. Only certain people got it. Then nobody has it. Then they took it away. You know, now they're not going to be doing fleets anymore, which I never did. Yeah, they killed fleets. That was around for yeah. a minute, a hot yeah. minute. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, they're like Google right now. They're just throwing things at the wall. And if it doesn't do really well, they take it down quickly. They won't just let, we let it We played on Thursday. We played with the new tweet deck, which, frankly, I don't like very much. Fortunately, I don't think I have it still. Um, but there is a way to turn it on manually. I really like I Do you use TweetDeck? Because that does have a minimal scheduling features. Oh, I think I I do have the new TweetDeck preview. Oh, boy. I, I used to use TweetDeck. I used to love TweetDeck. Yeah. But I, the or, only yeah, thing I used, used to, to be great, it and then they crippled me, it. Yeah. Well, well Sweet just allows me to do Facebook and all that kind of stuff and other applications as well. So. I, I'm hoping that they're going to, um, that this is a sign that they're, they're going to kind of start putting money back into TweetDeck. This is the new uh, TweetDeck. Um, it's a preview, and you can actually exit it, but they you have now a lot lot more capability to change the width of the columns. There's a new Explore column, which is actually recommending a good recommendation for me. Hey, there you go. Uh, yeah, uh, here's a bunch of Linux stuff that's just recommending. I guess it knows me. Tw Twitter, you know me. Open source. So this is just a. I just. It's interesting. These are columns you can add. Um, see scheduled tweets. This is what you use, but you want to do it on all the social platforms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's. It's just because again, I do stuff for other brands and companies like that. So, Facebook pages and website. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just everything all in one. Yeah. And, and they it they have the stuff time. just like that. So yes. Yes, and I can see it all in one place, and it works well on my phone. Ah, I'm not going to give them a commercial. They charge me more money. Why am I? Less promotion. <laughs> well, well, no no promotion. I, I don't even know if it works anymore. I, I, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. Yeah. The service used to be amazing. Um, now. <laughs> now they're charging people money. What, what, who does that? How, how do you survive? <laughs> Capitalism is evil, you know, unless I'm getting a discount, in which case, viva la capitalism. <laughs> uh, Twitter says, and this is kind of disappointing that they have a kind of surprisingly low two factor authentication adoption. Oh, this rate. was really gutting. What would you, what would, okay, I won't show the number. What, well, what I mean, would you, I mean they're, they're saying basically that the number of people in the last six months who are using two factor authentication has grown 9.1%. Oh, that's good. Great. But the total number of people using it is 2.3% oh. of users. Oh. And Google's got you, you, the same problem. I was down at an Enigma conference a couple of years ago, and they were saying they've had two-factor authentication for years. Only 10% of people are using it. And oh, even man, then, I when people are using it, they're using it with the SMS, which is the worst possible way. Well, that's another thing Twitter said. Of the 2.3% of all users who use two-factor, 80% used SMS. Yeah. 30% <laughs> used an authenticator app. And only 0.5%. So that's 0.5% of 2.3%. So it's like me. So you, use, uh, use <laughs> you a, and a couple of me mates. And a couple yeah. of mates use a YubiKey or some sort of a security key, which is clearly the best way to do it. Um, do, do, you know, do you know why, Uncle Leo? I'll tell you the general, regular human being reason of why. Why? I have 232 Twitter accounts. And Every other week oh, when I God. try to log into something, they tell me, what? oh, you've got to update your email. You've got to check your thing. I don't have time to, to authenticate my thing. Okay. I've got Are you the Russian names. troll factory? Look, Are you Fancy um, Bear? Hey, Is look, that you? The, oh, I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm I Heart Moms on there. I'm Negro Domus. Like, don't ask me what I am doing out here on the internet. <laughs> I'm just saying that I have too many. I don't have time. And same thing with Gmail. People open up 14 Gmails just to give free stuff. And I don't have time to second authenticate. And sometimes I forget what number or which other emails to back up. But I think you're Twitter unusual, is, aren't you? I, mean, I, I, I am, but we're just lazy Americans. Twitter pushes I'm people out them. all the time when they have lazy. one account. It's just yep. too much. I don't have... Who am I? I? You know what? Come and get me, okay? I am not an astronaut in the <laughs> upper atmosphere no, that I need it. to lock up my life Okay, from the people on Twitter. All right. I just need my stuff to work when I'm there. I don't have time for this, Uncle Leo. No time. 
Well, but I think that he, you're right. We are kind of lazy to be able to do it. A lot of people don't even understand what two-factor authentication is. They think that now they're going to have to sign in twice or it's going to become more work. But for me, I've already signed in. I'm like, I'm not going back to redo something, even though it could be more secure. I don't really worry that they're going to be saying, you know what, I'm going to give you, I'm going to double your Bitcoins if you give me Bitcoins. I don't think they're using my account for that. And I'm like, eh. so I don't do it. I don't think that I have it on. I don't even know if I have it on. I could check, but. Oh, see, I do. I, I don't. I don't. I don't want anybody to steal my I know. I, I, account. I, I got a very, a very concrete demonstration of why you should have it on. I Tell there me. was a a Proud Boy um, rally uh, in San Francisco about three years ago, and I made some comments on Twitter, basically pointing out these people were. I, I want to be polite, but basically, gits. Um, Stupid <laughs> gits. And then. Uh, within an hour of posting that, somebody had tried to use an old password to get into my Facebook wow. account and two-factor authentication had blocked it. We need to have multi-factor authentication, preferably not SMS. And I, I'm agree with you, Leo. The key works, and it's a pain in the ass to carry around, but so's a house key. Yeah, I carry it on my house keys. So, I mean, it's, I always have it with me. I, I don't know. I, I just, I mean... I hear from too many people who've lost their accounts or, you know, well, here's a, here's an example of why you maybe don't want it uh, to be too secure. Maybe you want the bad guys to steal your account because otherwise they might go to greater lengths. Uh, Shane Sonderman. Uh, bust. Oh, Sorry. man. All right. Well, there's a guy named Sparky, Sparky Herring. Uh, this Beth guy's Page. a hero. Bay, you know, page, if you did ever use FidoNet, this guy was an absolute hero. He invented the format that made it possible. QWK. And to die in this way is yeah. just shameful. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize that. So, yes, he is absolutely... I was a FidoNet uh, sysop. He's absolutely... It's a shameful thing. He had the Twitter handle at Tennessee, which is, it turns out, uh, a hot handle. Short handles um, are hot. Um, and I guess things like uh, at Tennessee, um, he, sh this kid, Shane Sonderman, uh, uh, wanted the username, contacted uh, Sparky. Um, he said, no, <laughs> you can't you can't have my name. So the kid hired or recruited a group of friends to harass him. Uh, they sent him a bunch of unwanted pizzas. Uh, and then things got deadly on April 27th last year. A, a minor in Britain who is not identified because he's a minor called yeah. law enforcement in Bethpage, Tennessee, claimed that Herring had killed a woman and set up booby trap bombs at his home. So he was being swatted. So cops rushed to his door. Uh, Sparky grabbed a firearm because he, he, he thought there were trespassers. When he realized there were three... There were police officers in his home. He dropped it. He went out of the house with a gun, his daughter said, because he heard someone was on his property. He sees all these cops around him. They ask, are you Mark Herring? Put your hands up. He tosses the gun away from him to show he's not a threat, puts his hands up, and suffers a massive heart attack and dies. Uh, they, they killed him. They killed I mean, him. I I'm, mean, I'm, I'm sorry. They just... And I'm, I was glad that he got the sentence that he did because this is just... Well, Sonderman, who was yeah. a minor, since turned 18, was arrested immediately next month, pled guilty in March to a federal charge of conspiracy, five years in federal prison. As, I think yeah, federal prison. his family are going to have to deal with this for the rest of their lives. Yeah. You know, I think it's federal is prison not a joke. We've had deaths like this before. Well, maybe it's not federal. I'm just saying. Okay, um, good. Uh, let me see. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go into the nice prison. I want to go in regular prison. <laughs> jail, man. He wants county yeah, jail. Yeah. Um, yes. I'm thinking it's a federal offense, but um, I don't – actually, I don't see that. So. Yeah. Uh, the, unfortunately, the kid who made the call will never – probably never be known because he was – he is a minor. Yeah. Um, it's not the first time somebody has died from a swatting attack. It's a terrible thing to do. It uses you know, 2017, some guy got... That, and that was even worse because they'd swatted the wrong address and some, mm -hmm. some guy who comes out uh, having no idea what's going on and got shot straight through the chest. And swatting is serious business. And this is, is getting people killed. 
Uh, don't get me started on American police procedures, but in this case, it wasn't a shooting <laughs> case. It was a heart attack. Yeah. But even so, it was just heart rending. When we got swatted some years ago, when we got swatted become, right? some years ago, the Petaluma police took it very, did not take it very seriously. A couple of guys came over. They said, hang on, hey, you got swatted in Petaluma? Yeah, in our studio. Yeah. Oh, good grip. Yeah. But hang on, everyone knows you there. It's just like, really? Maybe that's why. <laughs> you know, Leo's gone nuts with a yeah. gun. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, How much guys, have you had to drink, The mate? guy didn't say it was me. The guy said, I have shot everybody in the studio and planted bombs in the studio. Oh. Uh, I've heard the recording of the kid. Um, and uh, the police, a couple of guys came over, said, you know, we got this thing. Is everything okay here? And, uh, and we said, yeah. But they, but you know what? We evacuated the building. They got dogs uh, uh, and sniffed the whole place. They took it seriously enough, but they didn't threaten our lives, thank goodness. The problem is in a lot of jurisdictions, uh, the police are highly militarized. Um, you know, they've got, they've got military weapons, military gear. And, um, you know, sometimes they can be very aggressive in, in these, trying to save lives, obviously. In this case, they cost a life. And a, a life of somebody... Uh, who was pretty important to us. I do have to say, my, my, my interactions with the police in this country uh, leave me a bit... Uh, uh, you don't have great police here. You don't have really good professional police. I mean, I never thought I'd miss British police, but my goodness, they're at least a bit more professional about this. Yeah. Ask uh, Owen about that one. Oh, uh, you know. I, yeah. No point, no point in getting me ramped up. I mean, there's... there. Are, it's just like everything else. The world is a beautiful, crappy place. I've met cops that I would invite over for dinner, and I've had other cops put guns in my face over some chips, and I'm like, wait, what are we doing? Like, what is going on? So, it, you know, it's a mixed bag, but the bag is too mixed in a bad direction right now, so it is what it is. Uh, that's why I live in a bat cave, and no one can find me, and uh, I, I, I use all my tax loopholes, Uncle Leo. You got you to get on board, Uncle Leo. You got you to start hiding out. You know, we incorporate everything. You, you own too much stuff with your name on it, Uncle Leo. Every, your, I know. Your, your socks should be bought by Twit, okay? Yeah, this I'm is actually a problem because, it, at least in the U.S., uh, Buying a buying anything, buying a house is a public record, and people can easily find that information online. Uh, my homes aren't in my name. My yeah. car is not in my name. I don't. I, I, I don't own anything. My phone's not in my name. Like you, you got to look for me. My my driver's license isn't to my address. Like I, you know, when the cops show up looking for me, they're like, "Where is this man?" I'm like, "Call him on the phone. I, I'll come to you." That's how I live my life. We should I'll maybe send, send him a you. message. Maybe uh, <laughs> we should mention. That uh, Sparky Herring was creator of Sparkware and Quickmail, Q W I K Mail. And as a fine on that sysop, I was well aware of that because it was a really, it was in a way the first news reader. It let you log onto a billboard, download everything, then log off. And, you know, in my day, I had one line and then I felt great. I got two lines on my billboard, on my bulletin board, but it was pretty hard to get in. So if you got in, you want to get everything and get off as quickly as you could. And uh, that's basically. Uh, why he created it. Uh, he was harassed. I, I haven't even gone into all the things that they did to him. He was harassed No, I mean, he, he, was, he was a really good bloke, he, he was a great coder, and to end like this is just heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Sparky, uh, but we, we won't forget. Uh, and I'm glad this son of a bitch is in jail. Uh Elon Musk has confirmed with a simple one-word tweet. He, he's learning his he's learning his lesson uh, a couple of days ago. The word is no. Uh, Fred asked him, "Any chance of a normal steering wheel on future Model S and Model X Teslas?" And Elon's response is, "No." What is he talking about? Well, when the uh, Model S Plaid came out. It came out with an option for a yoke steering wheel. Now, there's a reason why there's a round steering wheel on your car. Because cars have a 14 to 1 steering ratio. You turn it a lot to get a little turn in the wheel. And that's sensible. That's how we like it. That's why you learned when you learned how to drive the hand-over-hand -hand turn. And right, Fighter jets and Formula One racing cars have yokes because their turning ratio is considerably... Uh, is it lower? Lower, I guess, right? So you turn the 
turn the steering wheel a yeah, little bit. Yeah, if you're going bit. around a hairpin in a Formula One, you you've don't want to go right hand <laughs> yeah, over. You don't want to do that. You don't have the time no. to be able yeah. to, to yeah. turn it 16 yeah. times. And, yeah. in, and in modern airplanes, it's fly-by-wire, so it's not, you know, this is a signal, not an actual physical thing. Uh, I don't know how Elon got approval for this, but they have now said that the yoke butterfly steering wheel will be standard equipment and there will not be an alternative on future Model S and Model X vehicles. That seems like a nightmare to me. I, I, I live my life in a certain way. And when I go overseas and I have to drive on the other side of the road, it hurts my heart and my brain to focus, to try to do it. I don't want to get in a car where I can't just roll back and put my fingers on the top and just be swooping. I don't want, this is not what I want to be doing. I don't need shake weights while I'm driving a car. Okay. I want to be able to <laughs> roll my hand and feel the wheel. Uh, uh, side note too. Did you see the autopilot guy with the moon? It was a blood orange moon and the, and the, the car kept slowing down thinking that the moon was a stoplight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, technology. boy. We, we, we living in the future. So tell me how your son died again. The moon was full. It was a Tuesday. Actually, he was in a Tesla. <laughs> consumer reports kind of wrote a scathing article about exactly that, saying Tesla's full drive self-driving beta software, which is now available for a mere, what is it, what do they charge, 500 bucks a month? I can't remember. They charge you a lot uh, for it if you have a Tesla. Is it's, it's, being, it's basically testing software on public roads without safeguards, and it's dangerous. It's not full self-driving. It's on city streets. It's supposed to recognize stoplights, stop signs, as you mentioned, Owen, it isn't perfect at that. Um, they but we saw this with a Tesla beheading. I mean, right. it, it's supposed to, you know, monitor the road. But in that case, a white trailer truck was going across the road and it mistook that for the sky. And some guy got his head taken off. Because, Consumer and, and Tesla are selling this as an autopilot option. They don't call it that anymore. But, you know... They are saying basically you can self drive, and people are taking them up on that. Um, it's it's willful danger, I think, for drivers. Consumer Reports got a quote from Brian uh, Reimer. He's a professor at MIT, the founder of their Advanced Vehicle Technology Consortium. He told Consumer Reports, while drivers may have some awareness of the increased risk they're assuming when they use FSD. Other road users, drivers, pedestrians, cyclists, etc., are unaware that they are in the presence of a test vehicle and they have not consented to take on this risk. Uh, it's a little scary. Tesla just asking to pay attention, people to pay attention, isn't enough. The system needs to make sure people are engaged when the system is operational. It's the same kind of thinking, though, that the NSO group has shown with their, you know, government-sponsored malware. We just sell the tools. We don't. We're not responsible for how people use it. So Tesla says, "Oh, it's it's technically not an autopilot, but you can use it that way." And then, you know, people get snuffed. A uh, professor at the American University School of Public Affairs who studies autonomous vehicles <laughs> said that the full self-driving Beta 9 equipped Teslas in a vehicle she has seen act almost like a drunk driver struggling to stay between lines. It's meandering to the left. It's meandering to the right, she says. While its right-hand turns appear to be fairly solid, the left-hand turns are almost wild. Uh <laughs> I can fix this easily. Tesla should be mandated to put a neon light strip under the front bumper and rear bumper. And when you're in this autopilot, non-autopilot, it shows a green light on the ground so that we know that you're not really driving your car right now. So if I want to but avoid so you, pass you, get load, by you. Though, yeah. Right? Like if I now I have to pay attention that you're not paying attention oh, to your car. Oh, oh I'm just right? saying it's give, it gives me a fighting chance because yeah. otherwise I wouldn't know. I'm just saying <laughs> it's the same way when, when cops roll up <laughs> with, with like lights. The, the, the student I, driver I just, is what you're saying. Like you have the exactly. little student driver thing. I, yeah. I just I just want to know that hey, when you see a student driver, what do you do? You pass oh, them, yeah. you get out of the way, you're gone. Yeah. Hey, go yeah. ahead and learn on your own, Blinders. brother. But I'm not here for it. So my, shine a green light on the ground so I know that you're in rookie mode so I can go on and go do what I got to do. Uh, you know, it's always been the case that Tesla acts more like a software company than a car company. And, of course, this is traditional in software companies. You release betas, even some that are not fully cooked, as we know. Uh, but they, but this is a little different. You're taking people's safety in your hands here. Plus, we're already such bad drivers as it is. We're, 
doing a hundred thousand other things that we're not supposed to be doing while we're driving. We're too tired while we drive. We do it so often that we don't understand that the that driving is a huge risk to us and to, especially in Quebec pedestrians. So, you know, well, that's no, the, in a way that's, I mean, in a way that's the argument though, is we're terrible drivers. So anything, even not the perfect thing would be better than us. Now, I mean, I'm sorry, your pilot's saying a, a, a ton or a ton and a half of, um, considering American cars, a ton and a half of metal down a freeway at 70 miles an hour. No one over here has any idea about st safe stopping distances. So you're all crammed in there like the rest of it. And now we're going to put buggy software in there and say, yeah, that'll handle it. It's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Um, this is a, a YouTube video. Um <laughs> where a guy's testing uh, the FSD Beta 9 and it runs into bushes. <laughs> it does. It's Dirty Tesla on uh, YouTube. It's actually a, kind of a, a terrifying video. And if I were... Uh, uh, a at least he keeps his hands near the wheel. At least he's worried about it. Well, and that's a good point. And I think Tesla really does do a lot to try to encourage you to pay attention. They do, you know, warn you if your hands aren't on the wheel and they say put your hands on the wheel and they'll turn it off if they're not on the wheel. I have to point out, though, that other companies like uh, GM and Ford are putting cameras in the car to watch to make sure that you are paying attention, your eyes are on the road, and they have capacitive sensors in their steering wheels, so they, they're a little bit more aware of, of your interaction with this. The Tesla's fairly easy to, you know, every once in a while reach over and jerk the, the, the steering wheel. Yeah, yeah, somebody actually uh, gamed a, a Tesla by hanging a weight off right. one side of the steering wheel and one torque. side of the other yeah. just to keep keep it going. And um, we did a story about a year ago of um, somebody recording a not-safe-for-work video in a Tesla with a couple of them uh, making the beast with two backs in the car while on the road. Oh, and Lord, kind of like, don't do that. Hey, Darwinism, you know, <laughs> maybe this is a good time to stop this. Do stuff, not reproduce yeah. if you are that person. <laughs> but, like, I don't want my car staring at me creepily either and having people watch me while I drive either. Like, well, no person is, is, is watching they're, they're... you, the car is looking for your eyes. It's not the yeah. person. Eh, we'll see. Well, I, I don't I'm know. gonna I don't hack. Know I'm trust. hacking into your car, George. I'm definitely gonna be watching yeah. you drive. I'll be like, I'll just come up over you the speaker. Make a, make, a left, me drive? make a left, Georgia. Make a left. You missed the left, Georgia. <laughs> Owen, that's my I? voice Ooh. on my on my phone. It's Owen. It's like Georgia. It what are you doing? What are you doing, hey, Georgia? I see you hey, putting I'm on here. makeup. I'm here for you. If anybody's gonna spy on you, it's gonna be me. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Just so you know. No SWAT. Like, I might show up at the house, see the <laughs> see the husband hug the kids. You know what I mean? But no SWAT. You know what I'm saying? No SWAT. <laughs> but I, if it's if it doesn't really if I, if my I have to be watching and my hands have to be on the steering wheel, it's not really any use to be self driving anyways. So really, just put it out when it's actually able to do the things that we want it to do. Because if not, what are you doing anyways? If I have to pay attention, then I don't need it to self drive. I'm already holding on to it and having to do other things. So. I find it frustrating yeah. just all the way around. Yeah. My car has cruise control and lane driving. assist. My, my car has cruise control and lane assist, and I, I use that I do too. on the highway. And all it's like, time. okay. Yeah. But I, you know, but I never take my hands guy. off the wheel or the eyes off the road because no. I don't trust it. Yeah. It, it's it's a you scary know that thing. People will we'll start slowly using be, become complacent and start to trust it. That's the problem well, is that we're my, my so yes, lazy. Exactly. There's so many Tesla people on car on video asleep at the wheel. That's yeah. like a viral thing that happens all the time. Like you're sleeping in your car and it's driving you on the highway. Yes. Like, know, why? It's, it's bonkers. I mean, it, you, I mean, when you when you look at uh, yeah, okay, the technology is there to do certain things, but people are overreacting to it and just like, yeah, I, I can watch a DVD or I can read a book or the rest of it. It's you know, it, it just like you're I, driving. A heavy piece of metal at high speed within feet of other people. Show some responsibility. Ian, I'll tell you this. God bless those people. I've never had a relationship that I trust as much as these people trust their Teslas, okay? <laughs> I don't know how they do it. So I, I, I'm envious of that kind of trust level. But I'm trying to get there one day, you know? It's crazy. <laughs> you, you would, uh, would you ever let your, uh, your wife or girlfriend drive? Oh, I don't. I really don't let anyone drive me anywhere. I I always prefer to drive when at all possible. You Same thing with yourself. cooking. I I don't let people cook for me unless I'm paying for a meal somewhere yeah. where I have to show up to myself. But I usually I prefer to cook. You know, if we're gonna die, we're gonna die by my seasonings. <laughs> <laughs>
You know, you see, I, I prefer to drive because I'm married to a Jersey girl, and when <laughs> she gets angry on the road, she gets really angry. <laughs> so, you know, it's just like nice British calm driving <laughs> rather than Jersey. Yeah! Okay. I am I'm curious, though, about this death by seasonings thing. Do you actually... Uh, what are, you, what are you using in your cooking? I mean, I, mean, I, I, I might, I mean, maybe I'll come out and make some for you. When I'm there. But like I said, get, get the guest room ready. I'll make your breakfast after the, after the Sunday twin. I'll, I'll hook you up a little bit. All right, it's, deal. It's so, it's so much not a joke that my daughter goes on vacation with her mother and her family, and she brings her own seasonings because oh, they don't no. season food. Wow. And now, last year, she made her own food, and this year... People are trying to use her seasonings. She's like, get off my seasonings. She said, oh, that's good stuff. Go buy it yourself. Share Don't the take secret. My what is uh, in this? What are the some, seasonings? There must be something good in this. Look, look, I'm a, a, look, I'm a t- Everyone's going to be sending you a message now. I'm a, oh, well, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Text me on my number if you want to find out. I'll give you one <laughs> secret of life if you just want to have some flavor explode in your face. Okay. It is called Herbs of Providence. Oh, Provence, not Providence. I grew well, up in I, I Providence. Call, I, I call it Providence because I can't read, and I'm from Jersey. So that's the herbs of Providence. There, you don't stuff. want the herbs oh. of Providence. Hey, look, look. Hey, well, well, how do you say it? How do you spell it? Just, if you don't know how Provence. to cook anything, throw that stuff on your chicken. Oh, you, you're you going to feel like you're, now, you're, do you you're buy, eating in the Garden of Do you buy bottled? Yeah, that's what I want to know. You buy bottled herbs of Provence? or Sometimes. I, I've made it myself twice, but guess what? I don't have the time. I told you people I'm busy, but get yourself some lavender on your chicken. That, that's the oh, key. Oh, yeah, the baby. Time and the lavender. Your whole life will change. See, people keep asking me for a cookbook. I'm going to get on it because the, pe- the people need me. The spices. Here's going, what's in herbs that's, of... That's the title of the book. Here's die a, here's, by seasoning. Here's what I die by seasoning. Death by seasoning. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I've, it I've, sounds I've like an a, Agatha Christie novel, but I think... It just smells <laughs> like my granny and I can never have it on Oh, no, chicken. no, but... Oh, 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 that's it's, horrible. It's yeah. rosemary, fennel seed, s- dried savory, thyme, basil, marjoram, lavender flowers, Italian oh. parsley, oregano, tarragon, and bay powder. If you don't know how to cook, just throw that on some chicken. And when you taste it, again, you're going to feel like an elegant individual born in the Garden of Eden. I'm telling you, put it on some chicken, fry it up in a pan, go live your life, come back and see me next now, week. Now, the herbs of Providence, however, have... <laughs> <laughs> are a slightly different flavor. <laughs> there might be some rocks in there. There's some rocks and some cigarette butts. Shells. Yeah, lobster shells. Okay, I'm sticking it in my Amazon as well. Here Herb we go. de Provence. <laughs> oh, and they'll, in Montreal, you probably have a lot of good choices, actually. Uh, we might. I'm, I'm, I'm Amazoning it, though. Yeah. You know what, my, you know what my favorite seasoning is? You can buy it at Trader Joe's. It's uh, everything bagel seasoning. Comes in a jar. Oh. You know, it's the stuff on an everything bagel. It's yeah. poppy seeds and sesame seeds and salt and garlic powder and onion seeds. But it's in a bottle and you can sprinkle on anything. It makes everything taste like an everything bagel. Mm. It's pretty That's good. That's my problem. That would be nice. Makes- I mean... I'm with Marmite on this one. You can do Marmite roast potatoes. No, 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 no. I have never no, no, had no, Marmite. No, no, no. Ever. No. Okay. Well, I mean, well, Leo well, okay. apparently has a pot I have but never both, tasted it. Both. Oh, I've tasted it many times. I have both. Oh, you have? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I have both Vegemite and Marmite. The Australian version of Marmite is Vegemite. Uh, the both, lesser version, yes. Yeah, both are created from <laughs> a byproduct of beer making, uh, brewer's yeast, uh, and... They have a kind of yeasty, salty flavor. I understand the key is a very thin layer on toast. Maybe with some scrambled eggs. Yeah, you don't want to go too thick. Yeah. And it has to be said also, the COVID uh, epidemic has had a real problem because people stopped drinking beer. So there was a Marmite shortage. (gasps) And I had to go without for like two months until I'd found (sighs) the stuff. But yeah, it's brewer's yeast. It's vegetarian. It tastes incredibly meaty. And it's, do it with scrambled eggs. See how black it is? Marvelous. It's like putting tar on your bread. <laughs> Georgia, 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 can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> don't eat or buy anything that ends in might. We don't do termites, <laughs> veggie might, raw might. I don't, Georgia, I don't put that in your cart. Let, let these old folks do. I mean, this might be why they live so long. You let them do it on that side, Georgia. Stay focused with me. Don't, no no there, veggie there, might, there. dynamite, and you. we don't want none of them mites. Okay, okay. okay. Here's, here's what it says on uh, Wikipedia. 
<laughs> Marmite is a sticky, dark brown paste with a distinctive, salty, powerful flavor. This distinctive taste is represented by the marketing slogan, love it or hate it. Mm. Yeah, pretty that, much. Mm. I yeah. mean, to, that, to, to my that, wife's credit, she ate it twice just to see if she liked it, and she really, really didn't. Um, I think it's one of those things that you have to be brought up with, um, but once you get the taste for it, there's nothing better. By the way, I, I think it's one of those tastes, and you know you know, so there are some of these, and I'm sure you know this, Georgia, that are... Uh, cilantro is a good example mm -hmm. that are very strong and but once you acquire them so if you grew up with marmite you would go oh i have to have it it's like it's a, it's a it's it, it is it is very potent right and cilantro is kind of like that there's anchovies are like that. I don't Yeah, and some people some people for for um cilantro, it's some people have the, the taste like buds that will yeah. make it taste like soap for yeah. them. Yeah. And some people do not. I don't think so. you could ever get marmite to taste like soap. So so I, I got I got my pen. No uh kryptonite, dolomite, <laughs> uh vegemite, <laughs> uh, dolomite. Uh, 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 uh termites. We're, Termite. None of these mites. There's a there's a big X on this mite list right here. I got going on. We're, uh, we're not messing with any of that. You no. I want you to. Was terrible, I want you to way. come up. <laughs> I know it doesn't sound now, good. A, a, black, a, a bottle of black tar. You want me to spread that on something? Oh, but it's no, thank you. It, it's it's one of those things where you go, oh, it's strong. It's strong. Hmm. Like licorice would be another one where people black licorice, like good black licorice, where it's strong. And at first, especially you know, if you've never experienced it, you might go, "Wow, ugh, that's a little, it's much, it's a lot." But then after a while, it really gets into your under your skin. I think it is um, amazing when you actually introduce people to it. Nine out of ten people are just like, "Oh my god, what have you just done with my mouth?" But that one in ten person is just like, "This unagi taste is fantastic." Yeah, it's, it's your mommy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know. This might get me thrown out of the country, but I think peanut and, peanut and jelly sandwiches are possibly the most disgusting thing in the world. Um, oh, so it's the, each to their own. Yeah, you you just you just so you, so you just ruined veggie yeah. for any human being listening to you because that is a stable classic <laughs> of the universe in the world, and you can't be trusted. I will also say to you, Uncle Leo, uh, this is twit. Uh, get back to my tech and do this read. On okay, the ad okay, so we can get back to I'm one gonna, more story I'm gonna. For you get me in trouble. They always blame me for this stuff, Uncle Leo. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're you're keeping me on track. Uh, every every episode, I just I say I'm like I get emails and DMs. Hey, what we got some tech today? If it wasn't for you, I'm like I'm the one doing his job. <laughs> <laughs> no, Uncle Leo. My Let's apologies. Go. <laughs> Our show today, thank you. Oh, and JJ Stone. Oh, doctor, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Our show today. The herbs of Providence. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by. I want to make those. I got to. That's a marketing opportunity here. I don't know. Oh. Uh, brought to you by ESET. Oh man, for over thirty years, ESET has been a global leader in cybersecurity. I've been doing ads for ESET for probably about twenty years, and I was shocked because I hadn't talked about it in a long time. When uh, I asked Russell, I, I ask him every time I see him, our IT guy, are we safe? We are we safe? Because I'm so worried about, you know, stuff coming in over the transom, our employees, in, in, you know, innocently opening an email and bringing the whole network down or getting ransomware. I'm so nervous about all of that all the time. And finally he said, Leo, we use ESET. We're safe. I said, oh, I know ESET. It turns out we use ESET. I'll give you a good example. ESET is a very lightweight does not use a lot of resources, but it's also the best antivirus protection you can get. It is a, it's more than antivirus, security protection. Ransomware is clearly the number one issue people are facing right now. We keep ESET around to keep us from becoming a statistic. ESET solutions block advanced threats. They do a multiple of different things without slowing you down. I'll give you an example. ESET Protect Advanced, they just announced this. This is, a, and this is why I think Russell likes it. It's a security man, management console. So he can, even if he's not on site, get real-time visibility of all our endpoints. You could protect and detect ransomware. You can use it on-prem or via the cloud. It's got service security, mail security, all the advanced features you'd expect. They help you sleep a little more soundly at night, I can tell you. And, and it's not just ESET Protect Advanced. 
They have other resources designed to help your employees do the right thing, to protect themselves and your company against ransomware and phishing attempts. We were talking about MFA. If MFA is not already in place at your company, you definitely want to take a look at ESET Secure Authentication. It's easy to use, user-friendly for your employees, easy to deploy for you. You can use it with Office 365, Google Apps, Dropbox. It's essential for preventing these phishing attacks. Now, once your employees' logins and endpoints are secured with ESET's MFA, and then you can train them for battle against online scams. That's because 95% of all breaches are caused by human error. Your first line of defense, it's your employees. So ESET has a fun, engaging, but effective cybersecurity awareness training. They also have interactive gamified training that teaches employees how to recognize phishing, how to create strong passwords, how to follow best practices on the Internet. And you'll be glad to know it only takes 90 minutes, but it's the best 90 minutes you, you could ever imagine for your employees. Highly recommend it. We have been using, even without my knowledge, he said, for years. They continue to innovate. That's key because these guys aren't sitting still. The bad guys aren't sitting still. You, you need security software that keeps up to date. And these educational tools, I really like these. A very important additional layer of protection for your business. Successful ransomware attacks are in the news every day. Trust ESET to keep you from becoming a statistic. Try an interactive demo of ESET Protect Advanced at business.eset.com slash twit. Ransomware protection, that means business. Get protected today. Learn more at business.eset.com slash twit man it's really yeah. was scary when we had uh, employees at home and now they're going to bring in those laptops i don't know i don't know what's been going on man, I, I don't know what Aunt Pruin's doing over there he's always uh, online you know i mean i don't know i trust you might, might want to scan that thing <laughs> i trust I, mean? <laughs> I think we're safe i think it's going to be uh i'm not worried about Aunt, but you know what we have a lot of non-technical employees as well right and speaking of uh, spyware, that NSO story, the top story we have. Haven't talked about list. it yet today. No, we have not. We should talk that's, about that's it. That's scary. I've been talking about it all week. We talked about it on Security Now, on uh, Twig. Um, I think we even might have talked about it. Did Jason talk about it on Twit last week? Maybe not. What did that story break? 50,000 um, phone numbers, we're not sure where they came from, handed uh, to... Um, Amnesty International and uh, a British uh, security uh, group uh, called, what was the name? I forgot. Um, sto something Stories. I always forget their name. Why don't I remember it? Anyway, they found, when they looked through these, <coughs> go ahead, do you know? Uh, well, no, I mean, uh, th 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 there's been a lot of work over this. Um, Two journalists in particular, Tom Fox uh, Brewster, sorry, Tom Brewster and um, Kim Zetter. It's, what, what it's looking like at the moment is this. Pegasus uh, is saying, we can give you malware to get onto any phone. And they had a list of 50,000 people, but it doesn't appear that Pegasus generated it themselves. That came from a third party. So it's now trying to find who the third party is. But... but when you look at these 50,000 phone numbers, it's very interesting. The dates of those phone numbers being put on that list correspond sometimes even within seconds to the dates of malware infestations on the phone that were analyzed by Amnesty International. So yeah. the list seems to be very closely related to maybe even a, a subset or a superset of NSO group customers. The NSO group is a an Israeli company that sells hacking tools, they say only to nice guys, uh, only to governments that are good. <laughs> and and right. more specifically yeah, to, the, more specifically to, to the point, people as well. yeah. right. more specifically to the point that they could just send you a text message, you don't have to opt in, click anything, do anything for them to it's put it on zero, your phone. In, in one, one of these exploits is what the, yeah, a zero-click exploit. You don't have to do anything. You may not even know that you've been exploited so they uh analyzed this group analyzed uh 37 phones m uh, many with a tight correlation between timestamps associated with the number on the list and the initialization initiation of surveillance attempts in some places as short as a few seconds that seems to me to show that the providence of the list is something closely related to nso group they found though what's scary and what's actually depressing you nso group says this is a it's not true. I'm sorry. Did I say bullshit?
I mean, piffle. This is piffle. <laughs> it's not true. That's the new word I'm going to use all the time. Is that okay with you, Ian? No, honestly, I, I would be harsher than that. I mean, I'm sorry. These people are selling malware, and and there's and, and they're, they're not only that; they're selling it against people who use journalists, it. human rights exactly. people, the rest of it. Adna Khashoggi got yeah, sorry, not Adna Khashoggi, but his girlfriend, you know, his fiance. People are getting killed over yeah, this. He got killed, and his fiance had it on her phone. And, Re and reporters are able to identify more than a thousand people spanning more than fifty countries. Uh, several Arab royal family members, 65 business executives, 85 human rights activists, 189 journalists, 600 politicians and government officials, including the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, 10 prime ministers, three presidents and one king. And, so, and again, for, for, for listeners and viewers, this specifically gets you text messages, emails, social media posts, your location, your speed and direction, Everything. all without any kind of contact. And this is where I look at Ian in the face over the seeds of the internet and I say to you, how are you going to two authenticate that, huh? How are you going to help me there, brother? Where, where's the text to authentication right. to save me from no. this NSO? No, but this is and important. Then, then they have this horrible, like... Like thing of saying, well, if you're not doing anything illegal, you really don't have to worry. Can you believe that they is the said most that? Ridiculous, ha, right. ridiculous answer. No, I'm sorry. Anyone who says you're not doing anything illegal, and so you don't yeah. have anything to to worry about, my response is: Do you have curtains? Really? Yeah. Because yeah. you know, if you're happy, everyone yes. looking in on your life like that, you're know, fine. But this is more than but, privacy. I mean, these people, yes, really, their lives are at risk because uh, these country. Clearly, a country that is looking at human rights activists or journalists is not a benign nation. No. Uh, but there again, is no benign, right? Like, yeah. everything is about power and control. There is no benign. There is no good, you know, people. If if our tech, like, my phone knows more about me than I know about me. Right. Right? So, yeah, exactly. and, and all of us could have something used against us in a way that would become malicious. It's a way of being able to control people, being able to track people. And we need to have laws in place that that should be just as illegal as if you go into my house and snoop through all my papers and I catch you there. Like that is as creepy as it is because they can find out everything about you from your phone. Um, there's two things, I guess. On the one hand, you're absolutely right that people who are uh, uh, not worried about privacy use that argument too. Well, if you've got nothing to hide, why would you worry about that? If you've got nothing to hide, why are you worried about government surveillance? That's one specious argument. But there's another one on the other side that I hear from a lot of tech people and security experts that you don't have to worry about this because this is – these are so expensive – these are you have to be a nation state to take advantage of them, and they're not general hacks; they're targeted. So you and I have nothing to worry about from the NSO group, not because we haven't done anything wrong, but because we're we're just not going to be the subjects of this kind of attack. I think that's also wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I think so if you, know you look at the contract that was put out, um, they were saying they were charging a couple of you know six figure sums just for targeting 10 people. Now, yes, you might say, well, okay. I'm not worth that. I'm not really going to be the person that's been targeted by this. But the fact that this can be done and all you need is a phone number. I mean, let's not forget, Donald Trump was giving out his personal phone number to European leaders, and this is out there. You know, the, the idea that you can sell malware legally as long as it's done to governments is just an anathema. As, especially in the case Points of... Points for using an alchemy. Right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm Googling it as we speak. So I, once I figure out what it means, I'll congratulate them too. But I, 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 I'm i doing the show. I'm in two chat rooms. I, I can't do three things at one time. Um, <laughs> the power of things like this, even again, where it's like, oh, it's only these people. Those people could be blackmailed with things that are on their phones. You know, we have the article in here we didn't talk about with the... Catholic priest who got outed because he was on Grinder and his location and where he was at. Oh, and things that like hypocrite. That. When, yes. when, when you, yeah. And so, again, when you are in these kind of power structures, imagine what you could do to cripple a nation, cripple a business if you just had this on the right person's phone. So, it might not affect mm -hmm. me on my day to day, but it affects important people, journalists. 
lobbyists, presidents, king, anybody. So it, it's it's a problem. It's yeah. a huge problem. Yeah. And I think we should be outraged because if you're not outraged, then they're like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Like that, it's not that big of a deal. Then slowly this is going to become more and more like out there for everyone to be able to use. And exactly. like, even just someone saying, listen, I'm going to be able to snoop onto your phone and take a look. You better be careful which way you're voting. Like even if you're not sure if they're doing it or not, I think a lot of people would oh, be worried about chilling, something that they're doing. Chilling effect. And yeah. And the it, it really effect. can. Yeah. Yes. Back to Blackberries and flip phones. So there, Matthew there Green. There is something to say about an analog world. Matthew Green, who's yeah. a cryptographer, uh, highly respected guy at Johns Hopkins University, wrote, I thought, a very good blog piece about it uh, on his uh, cryptographyengineering.com blog, where he argues against security nihilism. Uh, he says, a perverse reaction I've seen from some security experts is to shrug and say, well, you know, there's no such thing as perfect security. Uh, the people we need to yell at, obviously, is the NSO group, but even more so, Apple and Google. Now, most of these phones were Apple phones, so that was one of the things that scared people. Wait a minute, I use an Apple phone because Shogi's fiancé said, well, I used an Apple phone because I was told it was secure. Uh, but the Pegasus software was on her phone. Um, it should be really important to note. There's, there's both Android and Apple phones were hacked. There were only three Android phones, but that's more because I think the logs are deleted automatically by Android. So it was easy, harder. It was easier to find it on uh, Apple phones. But he says, really, what we need to do is demand of Apple and Google to do more to protect their users. And I think that that's fair. I think Apple and Google are absolutely care about this, but they are also economic entities. And um, they're perhaps, you know, doing the easy thing instead of the I mean, right thing. I, th I think it's fair, but at the same time, if if a if a nation state targets an individual, you are screwed. There is no way to get around it. Um, you know, you have endless vulnerabilities. They have vulnerability on the computer system. Um, as we've seen with the Snowden leaks, if you buy a new computer and you're on a watch list, stuff can be loaded on there before you get it. I mean, but these are very a uh, some very small number of people. But Scott McNeely was right; privacy's dead. And when Snowden came out, McNeely actually said, "My goodness, I didn't realize quite how right I was." Oh, um, for for those in the chat, Swamp Rat asked for one of my flip phones. I keep my BlackBerry and my burner on me at all times, baby. You need me. I'm in these streets. Oh, nice. You ain't going to find me. Now, but if, I, mean, I'm out here. if I call 844 986, show that number again, 844 986 4563, which phone is that going to ring? Oh, don't call me. It's a text number, it's, it's a bat phone. Yeah. Uh, and it, if you it, really are angry, leave him a voice message. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'll never hear it. I'll never hear it. So feel free to yell at me. There, I'm gonna leave, no you, one right I'm gonna leave I, you one I, right now. I'm gonna leave you one right now. I, I tell you what, I, I'm gonna pressure uh, uh, Georgia into doing this show with me. So don't mess with me, Georgia. I have not text you <laughs> when I when I get myself together. But anyway, it's for text line. Shoot me a text. I'm out here in these streets. The phone. Which phone does it ring? It rings all the phones. I believe all of them get the buzzing. And the computer be buzzing, everything, the laptop, the iPad, is we're all connected. You know what I mean? This is the internet. You know what I mean? They're tracking me out here, I guess, so they're going to find me. <laughs> Are those burner phones? Huh? Hey, look, I got a go bag, Uncle Leo. In case something goes wrong, <laughs> in case something goes wrong, this thing will last forever. On one charge, I can live four months with this bad boy, okay? The whole world shut down. I ain't got no power. I'm out here in these streets. So I'm going to be all right, Uncle Leo. in case of the zombie apocalypse. You can actually yeah. just go. I should Do point out, know? I can still track you on that phone. You know that. Uh, I just uh, uh, I, Look, you're going to track... Uh, uh, Whoever's name, I'm not going to give the person's name where all my phones are in. Because that was it. Wait a minute, you use the same name for all the phones? No, no, no. Are you telling them myself? Oh, 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 oh I don't. No, no, no. no. This, this phone, yeah, yeah, different names. Um, But I wouldn't know what the most important thing in my go bag is. That, that the most important is not even technology. The most important thing I have, cigarettes. Oh, vacuum cigarettes. sealed. <laughs> vacuum sealed. Because that's oh, going to be the money of the future. No, it's not for him. It's not for me. I don't smoke. 
But you know what somebody is willing to do for a pack of cigarettes? That's, that's called in prison. The apocalypse? That's called prison that's economics. Not, exactly. Exactly. When you when you out here in the world in the dystopia and you ain't been had a smoke in, in two months, and I pull out that pack, <laughs> oh, you give me a kid, the car, the gas, it's everything. Legal heroin. Boy. And you hey, really hey. have this. This is true, isn't it? You really do have it, don't you? <laughs> Vacuum sealed, bought fresh every six months and then sold and Smart. then repeating the Smart. process Smart. because they don't go back. The second best thing I have is condoms because in the future, I'm not trying to make no extra babies. And they're also used as like balloons. You can whip people with them. But I'm telling you, <laughs> you know the cigarettes is number you know, one. You gave me a great idea. You know what else people are going to really need in the future? Ice cubes. I am going to put ice cubes <laughs> in my go bag because I know that's going to be worth big money. Hey, hey. Uh, you know what? Your Ice Cube's idea is just as good as you not incorporating everything you own under the Twit <laughs> Empire, okay? I got to talk to your accountant. I got to get you straight out cigarettes. here in these streets, Uncle What Leo. kind of cigarettes? You recommend menthol? Oh, Newports. Newports, Newport baby. Oh, and, and, and that's the classic crack cocaine across <laughs> all barriers. That's what every kid started out on. You know what I'm saying? They might have migrated and left home, but they're always going to come back to their favorite when they need it in a time of desperation. I mean, you can't have enough cigarettes or ammo. You know what I'm saying? So I'm ready to go. Go, go bag is ready and rocking. All right. There's I a gotta... marvelous book called, uh, uh, is it Lucifer Rising, I think, where a, a, a meteor hits the earth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jerry Pornell. Liquor yeah, Jerry miniatures are like gold. It's <laughs> Lu Lucifer's, <laughs> Lucifer's hammer. And that's the one. I'm yes. sure Jerry loved his, his liquor miniatures. So that's probably why that's in there. I'm going to guess. Jerry used to be on this show regularly. Did you know that? And we had Larry Niven on too. No, excellent. Yeah. Big fan. All right. I mean, there's some great writing. From last night's Turning Point Action Rally in Phoenix, Arizona, the former president of the United States calling for routers. The county has, for whatever reason, also refused to produce the network routers. We want the routers, Sonny. Wendy, we got to get those routers, please. The routers. Come on, Kelly, we can get those routers. Those routers... You know what? It, we're so beyond the routers. There's so many fraudulent votes without the route. But if you got those routers, what that will show. And they don't want to give up the routers. They don't want to give up. You know up. why? They are fighting like hell. Why are these commissioners fighting not to give the routers? Because they wouldn't have any internet if they give you their be? routers. That will tell the truth. <laughs> I'm the biting county. my tongue at the moment. <laughs> routers. He says what? routers in, in that 36-second clip 11 times. <laughs> Uh, who wants to be the first to tell him? There's no data on those routers. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> it's it's ridiculous! He doesn't know what a router is. <laughs> uh, I'm 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 more angry at whatever person said this to this man to allow him to say this. I know he says dumps all the time, but someone had to tell him oh, that yeah. this is the thing. <clears throat> sir, it's, uh, he, ask for the routers, sir. Ask that's for what the we're, that's what we're looking someone, for. Because he, someone said this to him. He has no idea what he's talking about. So what moron? They, they must <laughs> fed him. Matter of fact, whoever said that, I love you as a human being. You are the savior <laughs> of the universe. Because I know you said this to him and his warped dummy mind, and you sent him out there to get stabbed repeatedly in the chest for sounding like a doofus magoofus. So whoever you are, I love you. Because he didn't come up with this on his own. Okay? He's never touched a router in his lifetime. I don't know what a router even is. know what a router is. <laughs> oh, routers. Maybe he meant to say something else? No. Okay. It, you know what it no, is? It's, it's kind of like he's been taught a word and has said, <laughs> say it again, say it again. All you need is the logs. You don't need the actual hardware. You just need the logs. Yeah, but Simple as that. And, I, and if it same, was hardware, you say servers. We need the servers. Right. We got to collect And that's what it is. Servers worked really well in 2016. Remember? Locker up, servers, servers, servers. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, it's a, you know, and now we'll say routers. Routers, router, routers. And, and not for nothing, along the Bible Belt and in certain places in Kentucky, the router is the internet. Girl, the router ain't routing my, my net in the internet. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on with the routers, but we got to get it. The president said we need routers. They call them routers in the UK, right? Yeah, exactly. I, uh, listening to this guy say it eight or nine times, you're just like, for God's sake, it's called routers. It's a router. It's <laughs> you know? And of course, in Australia, router means something completely different. So, oh well, yes, but that's Australia. <laughs> you know, they have drop drop bears and and weird things. So, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, I think that would be a fitting note to end this. I'm going to go out and check our routers and see if we have anything on them. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, 
I hope you have enjoyed this thrilling, gripping edition. I thought it would be more uh, lighthearted. It turned out we, we covered some pretty serious stuff. I blame you. It's serious times, I, though. I, I, well, maybe that's it. Maybe it's the times. Ian Thompson, he covers serious news in a very funny way at theregister.com. <laughs> Always love we the try. register. I love your take on everything. Uh, anything you want to plug? Anything you're up to these days? Uh, uh, actually, I'm. We we've had a situation where a woman in uh, my wife's office has tested positive with COVID uh -oh. after getting the vaccination. So I'm in lockdown, which is why I'm not <gasps> up at Petaluma. Oh um, my goodness! So yeah, uh, we're mm. keeping quiet until we know what the results are. There was an excellent article I think today in Salon about these they so-called breakthrough infections that the vaccine isn't going to protect you necessarily especially from this new delta violent uh, variant it's going to protect you from death and hospitalization so yeah. yes you probably should still be cautious indoors in public maybe uh, wear wear mask well, I mean, we dropped the ball on this one. I mean, we had SARS and MERS, which weren't as as infectious, but they were locked down. And now we've got 4 billion people who are unvaccinated, and that's going to breed a whole lot new of new infections. I had, so, a, I had a caller we'll from Montreal. Uh, you might be interested in Georgia. I asked him, because I knew that, uh, I was talking to Renee, and of course Georgia's up in Montreal too, having talked to Renee, that... Um, Things were a little tough in Montreal. There was a shortage of vaccines. They were, for a while, giving only one vaccine, um, mm -hmm. to hoping to spread them out a little bit and de deferring the second vaccine. Are things improved there? Things are great now, actually. Oh, I think that we have, we now are giving away a lottery for people that are vaccinated. If you're double vaccinated, you're getting a lottery. I think they were at 62%. Nice. Um, That's fantastic. So we're yeah. we're trying to hit this 75. Guy, uh, this guy so told me, he said, oh, I'm not doing a vaccine. I got lots of natural protection. I, mm. I said no. <laughs> no, we don't have natural. Just go out and get yeah. that vaccine, maybe. Just you know. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. Yeah. What the heck? Boost Ge up your immune system. Georgia Dow's anxiety videos at anxiety-videos.com. A great place to get help with a whole lot of different. She's a professional therapist. We don't mention that, but she is, and you can master life, sleeping, children, and more. Uh, I have them all. Collect all 10. Uh, and also, let's not forget your new YouTube show where Georgia yeah, my new YouTube channel. Georgia rants. What do you, you, you react? I'm I, sorry. I, I might rant and react um, to just different things that are in pop culture. So like uh, Marvel and Loki and the Invincible um, cartoon. Oh, I like this. Here's on. one. Most recent. Or no, this was in March. WandaVision. You're talking about the stages of grief because Wanda goes through grief, right? That's really yeah. was that a fairly realistic depiction? Yeah, it was. They they did actually quite a good job at being able to go through. Like they're faster, right? And not everyone goes through all of the stages, but I think that they did a great job of going through what nice. it's like to lose someone and how we can sometimes get lost within ourselves. Um, and then what happens if you have superpowers on top of that? So I get to react to the, some of the most fun videos. And then I do basic psychology videos as well. Nice. Like what is anxiety and how to survive opening up from the pandemic? Um, so I go you. through. You got, I know all did the Renee facial teach expressions. You, oh, did Renee yes. teach you how to do all those reactions? Yes. Yes. I have all of the. Apparently oh, that really goodness. works on, uh, on YouTube. It does. It's so horrible. And I have to pose for all. Like I have to look stupid is pretty much. You have to look stupid in the thumbnail, and then more people will click on it because you look stupid. More people so, click if you're yeah. in your if you're making a face mm -hmm. on a YouTube video. See your early ones. See, look, she looks looks nice. She's yeah, just sweet work. looking. No, no, you need no. to be. What the heck is going on? Yes. Yeah, like my yeah, the hair like yeah, yeah crazy, it's horrible, crazy Georgia. No, no, I love it. I apologize it. to everyone that hates the thumbnails, but they work better. So eh. yeah. I'm trying to build the channel, whatever do works, what do. whatever works. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube.com/slash Georgia Dow. Uh, mm -hmm. It's so great. It's always great to see you. And um, you. come visit us whenever you're in town next. I hope I, you will. When the world opens up, I'll be there. We can go to Canada pretty soon. That's the good yes, news. You can come here, but I can't go there. Oh, we won't let August you in? August 9th, we are opening up. 
And I think that it's not opening up until uh, like at least till the 22nd. It's not open oh, man. to go into the States. Oh, man. I don't know. Oh, I don't man. Like Canadians. I'm sorry. We're friendly. I do want to mention we do Twit every Sunday afternoon at about 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. That's 21.30 UTC. And I give you those times because you can watch us make the show live. There was a really good conversation before the show started. You would see that if you tuned in. Uh, the uh, live video and audio streams are at twit.tv slash live. People who watch live or listen live often like to chat live with us at our chat room, irc.twit.tv. Of course, on-demand versions of all of our shows are also available. Uh, all you have to do is go to the web, twit.tv. There's a YouTube channel. Um, let's see, what else can you do? There's, uh, you can uh, subscribe, actually, in your favorite podcast client. You get it automatically that way. And if, by the way... They let uh, you leave reviews. Please give us a five-star review. Let the world know that you're a twit. Wait a minute, that didn't come out right. Uh, I do want to mention Club Twit because there's another way you could chat with us in our Discord, which is always a lot of fun. Uh, to get in the Discord, you have to be a member of Club Twit. It's a way to support the network uh, and get some benefits for yourself. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all the shows because we're monetizing you, so we don't need to play ads for you, read ads to you. Uh, you also, and that's audio or video, all of the shows. There's also a Twit Plus feed with additional content, things like the pre-show chatter that we had. I think that'll probably make it into the Twit Plus feed. And access to our Club Twit Discord, which is a great place to hang with people, like-minded people, and discuss not only the shows, we have uh, sections for all of the shows, but uh, frankly, a lot of great kind of geeky subjects from anime to travel, to photography, to philosophy. And I think we're going to have to have a uh, seasonings channel for Owen J.J. Stone. <laughs> Speaking of Owen J.J. Stone, as is our tradition, we let him conclude the show, IQMZ.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Oh, doctor. So I was taking notes during your speech there. Uh -oh. Ian, uh, speedy recovery to your wife, first and foremost. Uh, hopefully <laughs> that goes well, and it should. Um, uh, Georgia, Georgia's got to do a show with me. People pressure her on the internet to make her do it. I know she's busy. I know she has better things to do. The last time she comes, did a show with you, come, she revealed her real name. name. I know, I know. And so we're out here in these streets and we're doing those things. And um, <laughs> I just want to remind everybody now that the world's opening up. Trust, but verify. Okay, so when you're going out to go see people and visit, if you know you're around people that aren't vaccinated, don't pressure them into it, but tell them about your positive experience, about how you didn't die and it's okay for you. But don't pressure them, but just bring it up occasionally in a nice fashion. No need for us to argue. But if you're around people that aren't getting vaccinated, make sure you're wearing your mask, especially when you go in a grocery store or you go inside, you go yep. and shopping. Yep. It's just better to save inside for you. Mm -hmm. If you're inside with three or four people, not a big deal if you know everybody's vaccinated. When you go into the grocery store, just put the mask on for right now. Not a big deal. It's not a political thing. It's a safety and health issue. And anybody listening to this should have enough common sense to do it, but I still say it out loud just in case you want to cut this clip and send it to somebody who is semi-rational. I believe that the world's going to get back to being a positive awesome place i know we're destroying the planet uncle leo but while we're here <laughs> love your children love your husband love your wife talk to your grandparents call them you know they've been sad and alone inside the house check on your family members and friends and another twit is in the can oh yeah text me i reply to people i talk to you i'm here for you i love y'all in these streets i'll talk to you later another twit's in the can amazing <laughs>